All right, ladies, that was a little tec- technical difficulties there. Welcome to your week, your weekly view into how much of a shitbag I can be on YouTube's. Um, I am the Spicy Burrito, and tonight we're going to take on some L.A. Noir, which is a game that I played, I don't know, a couple of years ago. It's a pretty old game, but uh, yeah, I I'll, I'll, I played it a couple of years ago, and it's, it's fun. It's a story-driven game, and it'll be fun to interact with these fucking criminals and, <clears throat> and do some uh, arresting on these uh, bastards there. Um, tonight's topic is, uh, I, I put criminal justice. I don't know how to frame the topic. It, it's basically, I'm just going to go through my favorite uh, criminal movies, crime movies. Um, not necessarily noir movies, uh, although there are a couple. So, um, yeah, in, in criminal justice. So, yeah, it's it's up, up for grabs. Uh, one disclaimer, I'm not going to talk about The Godfather 1 and 2 because I could do a whole stream on that just alone. So, that I eliminated The Godfather 1 and 2. But these are just my favorites. There's no five, top five definitive list. So, don't get your panties in a bunch. Um and like I said, anytime you disagree with me, you can start your own fucking channel <laughs> or take it up with me in the in the chat. I'll I'll interact with you. I'll argue with you. Um so uh let's go ahead and um I guess we can just jump right into the game. Now, oh, yeah, I I played through the tutorial. I don't think everybody wants to see the tutorial. So, just a couple story plot points to let you in on what's going on in the game. Uh, basically you run this tutorial through and they show some flashbacks of your character, Cole Phelps, joining the army and he's in the officer school. Uh, he's not like a, a Marine. He's like in the officer school and he gets his ass chewed out by, I don't know. It was some stupid, I never really paid attention. And of course I'm, I'm not one for, uh, um, yeah, that, oh, I don't know what happened there. <clears throat> one for that kind of story telling the background story i never really paid attention to the background story of cole phelps um but yeah so and i ran through the tutorial now i stopped at um i stopped at one point where you're allowed to make a interrogation and it's it's the last it's the last tutorial uh part so we're gonna interrogate our first criminal or, or no, investigate our first case and, and then interrogate our first criminal and then we'll be on our way. So basically all you missed was Cole joined the army in 1940, whatever, uh, World War Two, obviously. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's all, all you missed. I, I felt like after last week's long ass tutorial, Red Dead Redemption, that you might not want to uh, watch another whole tutorial. And plus, I know how to play this game. And I, I just familiarized myself with the uh, uh, good old controls. There's a couple things we need to do. Um, I think I turned down the audio and stuff. So uh, let's jump into the game. I got to turn it. Okay. Capture. There you go, baby. There you go. She's a little slow, but she's working. Um. You know what else I could do? I should do. I should get into character, shouldn't I? Um, let's move over here hold, real quick. Um, I think this would be better if I if I actually got into character. Like I'm a detective in 1940s LA. Uh, yeah, you know it. You know it, sheepdog. You know it. Uh, <laughs> you know that's my favorite movie. Um, oh, there's also one thing I want to do before we start. Uh, the greatest line in crime movie history that doesn't involve The Godfather. The greatest line in crime movie history that doesn't involve The Godfather. I'll give you a second to ponder that. While I, while I bring it up, because I'm going to play it for you. <clears throat> You'll never guess it, so we might as well just play it, right? <laughs> Let's hope YouTube doesn't play an ad. Here you go. Is this some kind of bust? Well, it's very impressive, yes, but we need to ask you a few questions. <laughs> That's the greatest line in criminal movie history. 
Oh uh, shit! I almost want to play that again. We gotta, we gotta play it again, right? <laughs> we, we have to. We gots to. We gots to. We gots to. Is this some kind of bust? Well, it's very impressive, yes, but we need to ask you a few questions. <laughs> it is some kind of bust. I must tell her. I want her. Uh, her name is Gina Mastro Giacomo. <laughs> Gina Mastro Giacomo. Um. Yeah, she she's got some big old dago titties right there. <laughs> big old dago titties. Uh oh, by the way, I'm uh four beers deep here. So you guys you boys got a lot of catching up to do. Um yeah, so tonight's gonna be interesting. And I got some good How's uh, going, oh, everybody? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Is this some Hold kind on. of bust? Well, it's very impressive, yes, but we need to ask you a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get enough of it. That's the greatest fucking. How, uh oh, God! Is I, this it, some kind of bust? Well, it's very impressive, yes, but we need to ask you a few questions. Okay, that's enough of the, enough of the shenanigans. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I had to place my beer there. So that is Gina Mastro Giacomo. Mastro, it's like, I, oof, Mastro bait to her, to Mastro Giacomo. <laughs> You're going to say uh, heroin, Frank Heroin. That's a tall order. Yes, that is another good one. I Any line from from what you call it is, is just fantastic. Naked Gun. Actually, that line's from, that's from Naked Gun two and, a half, 2 and a Half. The Smell of Fear. Great movie. But who would have thought that that is the greatest line ever in the history of crim, crime movies? So, um, and then another thing I want to do, let's... I was before I I played that. I want to play the part. Like last week, I kind of played a cowboy and I put on a really uncomfortable hat. Um, there's gonna be a, let's 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 do that. Um, hold on, it's gonna take me a second. Here we go. Let's put on a filter, a noir filter, right? Yeah, black and white. How about that? Now I'll, I'm gonna do us one better here. One one better. Ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> I thought it would fit over the, the fedora, but yeah, uh, just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Um, Officer Spicy Burrito reporting for duty. I'm with the LAPD. I'm here to... Is this is this some kind of bust? Uh, yes, it's very impressive, ma'am. <laughs> so, in keeping with the noir theme, we'll go black and white, and we'll put on the old fedora. I'll have these... Headphones. No, no, this isn't just an uncontrollable beard. It's actually headphones. It looks, and my head is bulbous. But I figure I better play the part, right? So, um, okay, now we can jump into the game. Give it a second for the software to capture. Okay, we got it. Let me just check, make sure the audio. Okay, I got it turned way down because I need to hear myself. But I I think you guys can hear it fine. But I got it turned way down because it's so freaking loud. Especially the gunshots and stuff. Okay, like I said, we're going to start off at our first actual case. Heroin. Heroin. Oh, and I pl I always play L.A. Noir in black and white because that's what you got to do, right? Fuck that color bullshit. We don't need that color. <laughs> Just the facts, man. Uh, buyer beware. That's what we're at. Here we go. Is that the cover? Uh, one of the alternate covers of uh, In Through the Outdoor by Led Zeppelin? I love it. I love it. Just like all those old, old noir movies. For every cop, there's the case that makes you. Gives you that leg up. 
gets you recognized as the shining new star in the squad. The case that you solve that shows that you have the gumption, the gung ho, the get up and go to make you stand out from your average. Go, Gators, out. get up and go. Uh oh. Get him, Cole. Oh, too late. LAPD, could you stand clear of the body, please? Has anyone called an ambulance? We've called an ambulance and the police, but I'm afraid he's dead. Okay, stand further back and move along. It's your choice, but make it quick, people. In other words, get hey. the fuck out of the way. You got here quick. My beat crosses 7th Street. Okay. Your first reporting then. We'll get Cheers, boys. Going and move the crowd on. You better see what you can find out before the homicide dicks show up. I'll be with you in a moment. What a bunch of dicks. <laughs> We're outside of Nun Bush shoes. Now, <laughs> I've always thought that was funny, Nun Bush. Uh, Nun Bush. Nothing for you to see here. Nothing to see here. Please move on. Um, I don't know if... I mean, Nun Bush shoes, those got to be huge, right? Because Nun's got huge bush, right? Anyways. Broad daylight. <laughs> just roll over the dead body. I've seen everything. Oh, Uncle Albert just subscribed on Twitch. Thank you, Uncle Albert. <laughs> oh, shit. What should we examine here? Oh, I don't know. Let's take a look. Oh, can we examine his... Never mind. His hoo-ha? <laughs> Pearl ear earrings. Fifty retail price fifty two fifty. She wore a pearl necklace. <laughs> she wore a pearl necklace. Received the letter. Where we received pearl earrings made out to Bank of Arcadia. Okay. We'll just stuff that back in his pocket. We don't need it. Let's examine his face. Can we, like, make smushy faces? <laughs> that would be great. All right. Did he say penis? Uncle Albert, I appreciate the subscription on Twitch. I'm Officer Phelps, miss. I'm here about the shooting. Did you know the victim? <laughs> he was my boss. What's the deal with her hair? Mr. Gage. Mr. Gage's first name. Everett. And you are? Galleta. Clovis Galleta. Clovis. Get the bad guy. Get the bad guy. Get that motherfucker. All right. Uh, witness details are entered on the left. She is a 27-year-old female. You think you can tell me exactly what happened, miss? I look around the shops at lunch. I was in a store when Mr. Gage, my boss, burst in yelling that I'm late on my lunch. And? I told when him I was back, late for my period. I was angry. I walked in front. I heard shots. I turned and saw Mr. Gage fall. <laughs> so, is she lying? I don't know. I, this game, just a disclaimer, this game is so freaking wonky. I think it was ahead of its time. The technology wasn't quite there. They did the face capture shit, which was great. Um, the faces are great, but they're put on these 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 dummy, you know, computer-generated bodies. So they kind of look weird. And you're supposed to, like, look at her and see if she's lying or something. I don't know. Um but I don't know what to say here. I'm just going to say she's lying. You're lying, Miss Coletta. <laughs> you know what happened and why. You're going to tell me. There's nothing to tell. I've done nothing wrong. How can you prove different? Uh, the, lay the layaway vouchers are evidence that she's lying. I don't... See, I can't put two and two together there. Oh, obviously the game can. Your pearl earrings. We got it correct. You've been paying for them for a whole year. The pearl necklace. 
tell me what happened at the jewelry store. Oh, God. I won't lose the earrings, will I? You can lose your <laughs> Oh, she stole the earrings? Don't stop obstructing a murder investigation. Mr. Kalu. Edgar Kalu. He runs the jewelry store. Good for him. He showed me a lovely watch. Mr. Gage bursts in. Mr. Kalu gets very angry with Mr. Gage. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. At each other. Mr. Gage tells me that all of the things in the store are junk, nickel plated, made in Japan. It's a Fugazi. And yells at me to get back to work. Then what happens? We get back here and I hear a loud bang. Mr. Gage clutches at his back. I hear another bang and another and another. Jesus. Mr. Gage falls Who lit this guy up? It was very painful. How many shots did you hear, Miss Galetta? It's difficult to remember. It sounded like there were so many, and they were so loud. Uh, I'm going to assume she's telling the truth, right? I don't, but then they do that shit with their faces. <laughs> like, like she's got to take a dump. Um, I think you're lying. I think you have to take a dump. Even minor details can become important later on. Just the facts, ma'am. Well, there was one bang. And then another. And then three very quickly close together. Five. I don't think she's a possible murder suspect. Uh, but let's just press it for the hell of it. Which jewelry store? Hartfield's. Broadway between 5th and 6th. Did you see the person who shot Mr. Gage? Of course I did. Mr. Callow looked very angry. He kept firing the gun. He kept pulling the trigger. He threw the gun in a bin and So turned. Mr. Callow did the uh, dirty off. deed there. So let's just go fucking beat him up. This is 1940s LA, right? Let's go kick his ass and fucking beat a confession out of him, right? Uh, they want me to press two, so I guess we'll press two. Suspect positively identified, though. <laughs> I got it correct. I don't know what I'm, what, why I doubted her, but. Tell me why Mr. Kalu shot Mr. Gage. Mr. Gage hates Jews. A Ooh, lot of people. Easy do. there, baby. It's not my fault if he has nice things. <laughs> Thank you for your help, ma'am. Been very brave. We'll need you to make a formal statement about what happened to Mr. Gage. Does that mean I can still collect my... My... Never mind. Yes, officer, I'll make a statement. Do you hate the Zionists as well? It's <laughs> like I get booted off YouTube. <laughs> uh, shit. Oh, we just conveniently found a handgun in the garbage can. What kind of gun is it? FN Browning. Sir, An FN Browning. Need to run by a gun store. I don't think so. I... Gun stores a couple blocks from here. Yeah, but we have the murder weapon. <laughs> and the murder. The girl saw it all. Our killer works at a jewelry store called Hartfield. Let's go arrest his ass. That's a couple of blocks from here. Thinking what I'm thinking? I love how Cole Phelps. Maintain the perimeter. Cole Phelps is played by the guy in Mad <laughs> the guy in Mad Men. That's all I know him from. I don't know his name or wait, something. There no you gotta listen to the music cues. You hear that ding ding? Oh, well, fuck it. We know who it is. Uh-oh. I got to drive. Never put me in behind the wheel. Oh, look at that. Look how beautiful this game is. Jeez. <laughs> it's like... 
Oh, shit. Hold on, it's going to take me a second to get used to driving here. This fucking thing handles like a Buick. You got to love these cars, too. Old steel fucking car. Oh, oh we almost fucking hit them. Big fucking American steel fucking cars. Yeah, crazy drunk drivers. <laughs> well, technically, I am probably above the limit at this point. As much as I've had to. Oh, I just rear-ended them. I never told you that story. I, I knew a kid in high school. Uh, his name was Adam. I won't say his last name. His name was Adam. We always suspected uh, he was a little light in the loafers, so to speak. Um, and we would make fun of him because he got in a car accident on Gay Street. <laughs> he got rear-ended on Gay Street. And it was like a joke. Oh, man, how high school could be cruel. <laughs> Come on, give me the green light there. Sorry, officer. I was too busy smoking. All right, let's get by this bus. I'm doing my best to get kicked off YouTube as fast as possible. Of course, they won't they won't investigate a guy who gets two viewers. <laughs> Holy shit. They had a trolley back in LA back in the back in the day. Let's get out of the trolley lane. How did they know if the trolley was coming up to them? Three viewers, three viewers. Uh-oh. If I get one more viewer, uh, YouTube's going to come after me. Hmm. Diamonds. So we're going to go in here and see some Jewish guy. Officer. Working at the jewelry Jewish. store. Officer Cole Phelps. Are you Edgar Kalu? Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Kalu is out back. He said he'd lie down. Bullshit. I'll buzz him for you. Bullshit. Go after him. Get him, Phelps. He's going to run. Yeah, there we go. Son of a bitch. <laughs> go, Cole, go. Cole. Good morning, officer. You want a donut? Hello, get back here. Should I blow him away? This is the diner from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> oh, I fucking failed the case. You got to be shit me. Why'd they have me pull out the gun if they didn't want me to shoot him? <coughs> uh, Forbes. The ghost of Kyle Forbes. You want us to come over and shoot him? All right. Officer Cole Phelps, are you Edgar Kalu? Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Kalu is out back. Oh, okay. Can down. you go get him? Nice tie, I'll dude. Listen. What kind of fucking tie is that? Get him, Cole. Sick him. Sick balls, chopper. Crazy drunk drivers. See, they have you pull out your gun, and then they tell you how to use it, so I shot him, and then I failed. Come on, Cole. You're an army man. You're a marine. Oh, shit, I pressed the wrong button. Get him. Get him, Cole. I'm just going to chase this guy around LA. Five viewers, welcome. Welcome. Thank God there's going to be a car accident. All right, beat his ass, Cole. <laughs> okay. There you go. Edgar Kalu, you're under arrest for the murder of Everett Gage. We always get our man. The case that makes you and the case that breaks you. I love this stuff. This One narration is great. The one that keeps you awake at night. The case that gnaws at your guts and ruins your marriage. 
The case that keeps you propping up a bar as you relive the what-ifs, the might-have-beens, the half-leads, the half-truths. The case that other cops murmur about whenever you walk past. The case you never... Enter the stereotypical Irish captain. God's mill may grind slowly, but it grinds finely, son. I hear it's you who nodded our malefactor from the shooting yesterday. Yes, sir. Then tell me, Boyle. I hear you're quite the climber, a man of initiative. Boyle. How would you like a chance at smiting this man with the sword of justice? Fuck yeah, dude. You're asking me to, to conduct the interview, sir? I am, young Phelps. You've only been with us a short time, and you've assembled yourself yeah, dude's a nose. arrest record. Not to mention the fine work you did in the war, sending heathens back to the hell they came from. Uh, heathens, I love that fucking well, word. I'm curious as to whether you can turn your hand to interrogation. It takes a certain animal cunning, lad. Do you think you might be ready for that? I've got the cunning. Yes, sir. I think I am. Good man. You need many things for a conviction, young Phelps. A motive, opportunity, hard evidence, and best of all, a confession. If you fail in the former, you can always use a modicum of violence to obtain the... Hell life. yeah. We can beat his ass. How are you feeling, lad? Yep, it's Fine. James Cromwell, Boyle. Very good. The evidence is overwhelming. May the cat eat him and the cat be eaten by the devil. Bring me a confession, young Phelps. This is your chance. Don't fail me. Boyle. All right, we got this fucking dude dead to rights, right? Has my lawyer arrived yet? I want to see my lawyer. We don't give a fuck. Lawyer can't tell Lawyers don't exist in 1940. Shot a man dead in cold <coughs> blood. 1949 L.A. This was back before L.A. was a fucking total shithole. Argument with Gage. You followed Everett Gage and a girl back to the shoe store. You put five rounds in Gage's back. Gage was a was a bastard. Whatever he got, he got what was coming. But it had nothing to do with me. Finally, somebody's smoking. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I'm Guy Pierce, the Boy Scout. Um, you're lying, dude. You shot Gage, and we know why. We can put you at the scene. You can't prove anything. Eyewitness account, right? Yeah. We know all about the argument. Miss Galetta made a statement. You're you're counting on the girl. You think her testimony is going to stand up in court? Why not? You're going to the gas chamber. Fuck yes. That you hating fuck couldn't leave me alone. I had a sale. That girl was ready to buy. Okay, so the Jew hater hates this guy. So, a uh, religious motive? And it's telling me to observe the suspect. Well, he looks like a guy with a bad fucking tie to me. Let's change the subject. You fasting for Yom Kippur, Mr. Kohler? Yeah, let's change the subject, you going motherfucker. <laughs> Baseball. You're not denying you're a Jew, Mr. Kalou. This is America. It's not Germany. It's not a crime. Some people don't like Jews, Mr. Kalou. Yeah, and I guess you're one of them. Gage hated Jews, didn't he, Mr. Kalou? Jesus. I don't know what you're talking this game about. pulls no punches. Um. Oof. I don't know what to do here. Um, I'm just gonna doubt it. Oh, I got a clue. Left wing leaning parasite. <laughs> yes. You, me you that? tell that commie you to fuck that? off. And you call me those names, you goddamn goy butt snatcher. You and that stump gauge. Why did you do it, Mr. Kalu? Gage. He's in the Chamber of Commerce. He's in with all those momsers. He blocked every proposal I ever put forward. Kike this and kike that. No. He's been trying to ruin my business for years. We're going to get booed Mr. off you, you two for hate speech. I'm charging you with the first degree murder of Everett Gage. I respect your beliefs and your right to hold them. I hope for your sake the jury can commute to murder in the second degree. May God have mercy on you, sir. Hell yeah. Cole. Cole always gets his man. Or a woman. Masterfully done, Officer Phelps. It is just Officer Phelps. Isn't it, lad? Yes, sir. Then let me have a word with the Chief of Police, young Phelps. The department needs heroes. A shining, honest face the public can admire. 
I applaud a man with your talent for unwavering justice. Back to your duties for now, Boyle. Duties. Here's a piece of advice. Get yourself two suits, get them pressed. You'll be needing them. <laughs> His duties. All right. How'd we do? Oh, that was loud. We have sound investigative investigative technique. Our service weapon proficiency. Well, because we didn't shoot the guy. Peak physical conditioning because we chased him down. And keen interrogation instincts. And that only happened because I played this before. <laughs> so it's going to get much worse because I won't remember anything else. Yeah, this game is fucking... It's... It's totally uh, fucked. Like. Okay. So we did that. Let's go ahead and resume. Um, no, I don't want to replay Buyer Beware. There we go. This is the next case once you're off the tutorial I hope the 111 club I, I, uh, that's next door to Hef's Grotto yes Everybody walks like they got a fucking... They're holding in a fucking big shit. Here's your new desk, kid. You're on traffic. The hot sheet is posted here next to the map. What's his problem? <laughs> That's Biggs. He's an institution. So this is what all the fuss is about. Why couldn't they build a freeway that goes past my place? They haven't even approved the money yet, kid. The bond issue won't be till December. It'll be years before any of this will happen. Here's your new partner. Stefan Burkowski. I've heard all about you, Phelps. Uh oh, Burkowski. He's the bad news. The odd citation, and maybe we'll get along fine. I'm here to learn, Detective. Oh, he's an intense one, isn't he, Mel? Who's intense? The newly minted detective here, Cole Phelps. Hi, Phelps. I'll be keeping an eye on you. I could spend a little time basking in reflected glory. Make a change from busting hookers and dope fiends. <laughs> Do you send those hookers and dope fiends to the night court? Girl, chief detective and advice. They all dress like movie stars. Well, Roy is a movie star. And the whole of this... Roy the boy toy. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Don't be so good. naive. You'll find out. And now some housekeeping. Warm Central Division welcome for Detective Cole Phelps. Some of you guys may know Phelps. He's the cop who broke the jewelry store murder. I didn't get a harump out of that guy. Bow, Phelps. Uh, if it's all right with you, That's sir. That's an order, Phelps. Ooh. Shh, shh, quiet, everybody. <laughs> Phelps is one of only two serving LAPD officers who received the Silver Star during the war. Really gave it those lousy Japanese, eh, Phelps? Hell yeah. I did my best, Captain. Why are you war heroes always so modest? I've partnered Phelps with everybody's favorite pole, Stefan Bukowski. <laughs> Hope you like work, kid. Bukowski sure as hell does it. That's why we have partners, right? <laughs> okay, okay, can it, guys. Nice fedora. Stick with Bukowski. He's a good cop. He knows traffic inside now. I'm going to start you out with one case. You okay? I'll give you a couple more. You screw up, you'll be rousting vagrants and running license plates. Oh, that sounds like down fucking hell. Get freight depot, 6th and Alameda. Patrolman called in a suspicious vehicle. Signs of foul play. See what you can find out. Come on, Phelps. Do we have to? Putting recording devices into the place for me. <laughs> That's awful bright. You're wasting time. Get out of here. I'll just review my notes. Of Captain. Hmm. All right. <laughs> oh. 
Just crap dust everybody. They really pushed you through quick, didn't they? Six years on patrol before I got to this desk. You were here in five minutes. What do you want me to say? I didn't ask for any favors. <laughs> I want to make homicide. I mean, you know you made it if you got that desk. If I guarantee he walked. The main reason Santa's so jolly is that he's the cop that won the medal and has solved all the cases. Is this the car we're supposed to go in? How did he get ahead of us? A little sneaky little shit. You know this place? Sure. Near the old gas works and signal depot in the warehouse district. I'll direct. All units of 459 just occurred at 6 and 7. So, it's under a little back, so I got Are we friends now, Lukowski? We have to work together. Don't be so touchy. <laughs> Grew up in San Francisco. My father was. God damn maniac! Grew up in San Francisco. <laughs> My father was <went> shipping. <laughs> went to college at Stanford. And did two years. Get out of the way. Before Reno CS at Camp Elliott. Shipped out in early '45 as a first lieutenant. I fought in the Okinawa campaign. I was wounded. Shipped back home. Did a year on the beat. Now I'm here. So you won the Silver Star. I don't want to talk about it. Now let me get this straight. You single-handedly killed 40 Japs on this hill in Okinawa. 40 Japs? No. You were up there all night, draped in the flag, knife between your teeth, gun at the ready. Finished? Raging yeah, hard on. He to himself, leading the charge against you. I did my part, Bukowski. What did you do? I kept the streets of L.A. safe for the people. Yeah. Now I get it. Unfit for service. Fuck you, Phelps. I earned a bravery citation during the Zuda riot. Sounds like you had it rough. I did my job. No one is saying you didn't. I did six years as a patrolman. That's the third time you've told me. Where is this place? LA's a big fucking town. this place we should just follow the traffic the traffic laws like stop at the red lights oh oh shit okay that woman is pissed Jesus Christ are you asleep over there or what come on it wasn't that bad Move it or lose it, pal. All right, here we go. That you, Bukowski? Yeah, that's me. Parking lot straight ahead. I need to get back to work, officer. The detectives are here now. Oh, you repeat to them what you told me. I did the right thing by calling this in. I'm just a working stick. Just give him your story and you'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's lucky Cole Phelps is on the case. This is your first case, Phelps. It's okay to admit it if you're stumped. If you don't know what to do next, just come talk to me and we'll see what we can figure out. Whatever, dickhead. Thanks, Stefan. You're okay. Stefan. What kind of name is that? I'm Officer Hart. Phelps. How's it going, boyo? What have you got? Abandoned car. Probably stolen. The solid citizen is Nate Wilkie. He called it in. What gives with the corner? There's blood all over the interior. Someone's copped a full Broderick, but no stiff as yet. We have an owner for the car? 
car is registered to an Adrian Black just north of Bunker Hill. All right. I didn't know we were in Boston. I'll keep Mr. Wilkie talking, but don't make him wait too long. He's the restless type. The young and the restless. Nice day for it. How long are you going to keep me here, sir? What is this? It's a wallet. Oh. Hey now. Adrian Black. Interview Mrs. Black. Years old, married. Sounds like an average guy. What was he doing out here? Huh. I don't know, Phelps. Well, he married the Joker? Happier times, I guess. <laughs> Javi? No, no Javi. Let's pick up his glasses. What a fucking nerd. Was there anything to learn about these? No? Okay. How's the world looking? Pretty... There was, I don't know. There was a brutal murder. Look at all the blood. In this I've got a mystery sample waiting at the lab. Oh, my God. It looks cooler in black and white, by the way. I'd say he lost a lot of fucking blood. Jesus. Oh, pack of smokes. American Spirit Gold. Ah, boo. We know what Brandy smokes. Low birth weights, right? All right, so should we interview this dude? Old lug nut Larry here. Sir, I'm Detective Phelps. Name's Nate Wilkie. Oh, Nate Wilkie, I'm sorry. Sure. Saw it just sitting there. Strange place to be parking your car. Figured I'd better take a look. And then I saw all the blood. So I called the police. <sighs> Let's check out. This guy, he's innocent. Let's Mind if I ask what you were doing out here? Well, I work for the railway. I was on my way out to the switch and reckon I'd... A likely a story. Uh, he's telling the truth, right? Did you see anybody else in the yard? Maybe somebody hanging around the car? Nope. I hadn't seen a soul all day till you boys turned up. Do you know Adrian Black, Mr. Wilkie? Mr. Javi? No, sir. That ain't a name I'm familiar with. Uh, is he telling the truth again, or should I doubt him? Let's doubt him. Do you want to tell me what you know, or do we have to take you in and loosen you up a little? <laughs> Who do you think you are talking to me like that? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Sorry, <clears throat> I fucked that one up. I the wallet by the car. Was there anything in it when you arrived? You accusing me of something, mister? <laughs> You're stealing some shit. You're totally stealing shit. He rolled his eyes, right? Tell the truth, Mr. Wilkie. You rifled the wallet. My money is my money. You can't prove I touched that wallet. I'm going to assume that the wallet was like out of place or something. Man does the right thing and the police try to turn him into a criminal. You're damn straight. All right. <laughs> so I told you this game is wonky. If you don't mind waiting a little longer, I'm sure we'll have more questions once we've had a look around. This guy's going to light up a smoke. Doc. Detective. 
What have we got? A lot of blood for a blunt force injury. No shit, Victim Sherlock. Very bad way. Any sign of the guy? Not unless he's in the trunk. I think I could deal with a carton of low birth weights. So the dock didn't help at all. The wallet didn't help at all. Is there anything else around here? Get back here, Phelps. We're not done yet. All right. Keep searching. I'm missing something. No, oh, the cigarettes. Don't think this is anything. What am I missing? Oh, the garbage cans, maybe? All these criminals seem to throw guns in the garbage can. Well, I guess not. Oh, the trunk. Riverside Slaughterhouse. Fuck Morgan. Three dollars and twenty cents for a whole fucking live pig? Man, I want to go back to the fucking forties. What is it nowadays? Like fucking three hundred and twenty dollars? Does that tire tire iron have a fucking blood on it or something? Doesn't tell me anything. No shit. Let's talk to our partner. Is he going to be of any help? I'm stumped. Ideas? Have a word with the witness. It's not often we get eyeballs in a case like this. I already talked to him. I best be heading back to work. <laughs> My boss is going to give me hell regardless. This is your problem now. I'll have the car towed down to the impound. That's about all I can do here. Huh. What else can I do? Black residents. All right, let's take off. Where's our car? Okay. No, I'm not picking up the cigarettes again. What is this? Oh. Ooh, a nice. <laughs> the guy did it with a lead pipe. In the rail yard with the red lead pipe. Is somebody gonna tell us what the hell's going what does that say? Instagram? I'm not a loss. I have a word with the witness. It's not often we get eyeballs in a case like this. this scene is a mess. Could have been a dozen different crimes committed down here with all the bows hopping freights. Okay. Now, can we go? Get back here, Cole. <laughs> Get in the car, dumbass. Bunker Hill Avenue. You know where that is? Behind Bunker Hill. A couple blocks north of Central Station. So, what do we tell the wife? Play it by the book. <laughs> Your husband's no stiff, dead. Yet, so let's see how it plays out. KGP Delta NE unit to 459 there now at 267 South Main. Unit to handle code 2 identify. 
Could be a car theft gone wrong. Make Black drive somewhere lonely, then give him a tap. Oh, I totally missed him. So genius. Where is Adrian? You've gone to all the trouble to steal the car. Adrian. So you leave the body behind, not the car. You got something there, folks. It doesn't add up. Phelps has a good a cunning instinct. Did you read about the guy on the crossing yesterday? No. <laughs> Excuse me. Coming through. Oh, what happened? Over on Lincoln Avenue. I don't want to just keep talking. And his oil light comes on. He stops the car and gets out. He pops the hood and he's on a rail car. Oh, you got it. He's got his head under there checking the oil. The Southern Pacific freight slams into his car doing 90 miles an hour. 90. Could cars even get up to 90 back in the day? <laughs> Fuck this thing. You'll get plenty of blood and guts and mindless stupidity worth traveling, folks. And who needs a second? Oh, fuck me. The next intersection without killing anybody. Can you do that for me? <laughs> See you, lady. Well, we're not going to get any points for driving safe. Plenty of blood and guts and mindless stupidity. Who needs a second amendment? We'll, we'll give a goddamn Blood fool. flows red on the highway. Move, we're we're in traffic. If it's a kidnapping, why leave the victim's ID? Moving violations when I move. Free lesson, Phelps. Evidence will only get you so far. Is this Is this Is this Sunset Boulevard? Moving violations. What I wouldn't give to have your powers of intuition, Kowski. Don't worry, kid. Watching the master, and you'll get there one day. <laughs> All right, Yoda. Yep, Colonel Mustard. I'm telling you, it had to be Colonel Mustard. One plus two plus one plus one plus two. <laughs> one plus two plus two plus one. Let's go introduce ourselves. You talk to her, Phelps. I'm no good at this shoulder to cry on stuff. All right, I'll just give her a tap, uh, a, a tip of my fedora, and she'll be all right. She'll get all wet. LAPD, Mrs. Black. May we come in? We have some bad news, and we'd rather discuss this in private. I'm Margaret Black. Oh, we can discuss this in the living room. Please come in. All right, I'm Mr. Green. You don't have to run. <laughs> Your husband drives a blue Lincoln, Mrs. Black? That's correct. Yes. The car has been That's the whole goal. We're going to get, so get some of those pedos. <laughs> Something was wrong when he didn't come home. We believe your husband may be injured. This is man. This is when Hollywood was oh was no. fucking awesome. My poor Adrian. <laughs> Does the name Insta Heat mean anything to you, ma'am? Yes, it does. We've just had a new water heater installed. How convenient. Whereabouts, Mrs. Black? Just outside the kitchen window, at the side of the house. I'd like you to try and stay calm and remember everything that you talked about <laughs> last night. Oh, the, you missed the, we're going to bust all the left-wing leaning of parasites. <laughs> of course, officer. Anything to help secure my husband's safety. Well, let's check the place out. Come on. By the way, Mrs. Black, do you mind if I take a dump in your uh, bathroom? I really got to go. Why is he running? <laughs> Hasn't given me anything to go on. <laughs> it was it was Mr. Green with the vase. Why is he running? Look at that radio. That's fucking awesome. Uh oh. Good look around. There's got to be something in here to go on. Flashback. Uh, 
All right, here's a little cutscene. Um, yeah, there was a cutscene about this doctor earlier. I'll talk about it after this. Yes, doctor. He seems very concerned about you. I have these visions, these blinding visions. I can't get them out of my head. Uh oh. My skull, it, it feels like it's in a vice. I want to give you something to calm your nerves. Oh, he's giving him the jab. I want to take you on a journey. A journey back. I want you to remember the good things about the past. The occasions that made you laugh. The times that made you smile. The times that gave you a boner. Alienist Fontaine provides help to troubled vets. Okay, so this guy's working on some kind of cure for uh, post-traumatic PTSD. They don't they don't understand PTSD. The only problem is I find that doctor not very convincing. He's got this, like, Cajun accent. I wish they would have just gave him a regular accent. I mean, what's, a, what's a Cajun doing out in L.A.? You know what I mean? And I still haven't figured out why Cole Phelps is running around this room, but... No, they're going to tease me into picking up the cigarettes again? <laughs> oh, no, a matchbook. Kavanaugh's. <laughs> Kavanaugh's, huh? Judge Kavanaugh. It doesn't have an address. Maybe Adrian was a patron. Aren't I should have an address. Okay, so I got to call for an address on that. What'd you have for breakfast? More Kavanaugh cigarettes matches. Oxidol. No good to me. Except if he was playing Monopoly, it'd be good to him. This isn't what we're looking for. <laughs> Sorry, Clark. Shitter's full. I want to read the note on the fridge. Oh, so they did buy a water heater. Here's the receipt. This was only recently installed. Not two days ago. Maybe it's time we took a look around outside. $82 for a fucking water heater. Not bad. Ten year guarantee. They cannot rust or corrode. Eighty two fifty, I'm sorry. Eight dollars and fifty down on terms, on easy terms. Oh, there's an address. Wait, hold on. Oh, no, let's grab that again. Was I supposed to investigate further? Was I supposed to zoom in? I just want to make sure. Nope. Okay. Put it down, Cole. More Kavanaugh matches. Oh my god, is he a judge? It looks like he's a judge. Oh no, just a businessman. <laughs> I was going to say Kavanaugh? To my Adrian, love sick and lonely without you. Uh oh, love triangle, huh? Why is the D shit bags can get laid and I can't? <laughs> this must be Adrian's. <laughs> oh wait, 
No glasses. Stencil. Yeah, we sh we found glasses at the crime scene. But it didn't do anything for me w when I picked them up. Oh, boy. That looks like a train ticket. Used ticket to Seattle and a suitcase <laughs> gone missing. One lefty shithole to another one. <laughs> L.A. to Seattle. Wonderful. Wait, was I supposed to? Can you investigate that further? Flip it over, Phelps. Oh, never mind. This is the bedroom, but nothing ever happened in here. <laughs> what a crime. Separate bedrooms, separate pictures. What gives here? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's how I imagine she talks. <laughs> What's the we weather forecast? Cold. Very cold. But your ass will be plenty hot. No blue lights back in the day. Or ultraviolet lights or whatever. Alright, the guy said go outside. Let's go outside. Where's this water here we're supposed to look at? Well, it looks like I picked the wrong way. Sunflowers? Oh, pruning shears. Ah, circumstantial. No use leaving the thing half finished. Oh, come on. We're going to have to put it together. Oh my god, I am way too drunk to do this. <laughs> I can't be right. Hold on. I didn't know I was gonna have to solve a fucking puzzle. I'm not I'm a detective, not a plumber. Hey, yeah, got one right. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor. Look at me. Who needs plumbers? Uh oh. So the pipe missing from Mr. Black's heater is the same one that killed him. Huh. Seems like the assailant is a little closer to home. I bet our pipe fit fits. A <laughs> pipe fitters union. Wait a second, I heard a ding ding. Nothing. Okay. Let's go talk to this broad. I'm all right now. I don't care. What about you? What say you? Okay. Um. What do we ask her about? Let's ask her about the matchbook. Your husband frequents Kavanaugh's bar. How did you know that? Kavanaugh passed the bar. We lived there afterward. 
Yeah, you know it. That's how I light some pipe. So Adrian spends a lot of time. I think I got that one correct. Until recently, he's been away in Seattle a lot on business. Okay, that explains the the. Um, That explains the, the bus ticket, right? Did your husband tell you where he was going last night? Fuck some who was? That was he was giving me to Frank for a drink. Or fuck Frank. So nothing out of the usual then. Well he came home early from work. And he never comes home early. Uh oh. And he went out early too. He normally never leaves for the bar till about seven. <laughs> what does the slaughterhouse receipt have? You found to a receipt on? in the trunk of your husband's car for a live pig. <laughs> this receipt was made out to an F. Morgan. A pig? Oh, that was me. <laughs> in the tool business. That would be Frank Morgan. God knows what he's up to. You pig. Um the situation doesn't look good, Margaret. You need to tell me what you know. Hell yeah. There's no need to be so aggressive. I'm also a victim. Boo hoo hoo. We got that wrong. Tell us about the photo of Adrian in the bedroom. What is there to tell? It's from his most recent business trip to Seattle. It's his Gumar. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is a lie, right? There's plenty to tell. You just won't tell it. You're lying about the photograph, Mrs. Black. You're incredibly rude and insensitive. Oops. But I guess you know that. I've told you what I know about the picture. Uh, I don't know what we're doing here. Does she really know he's not cheating on him? What about Nicole? Oh, nice. Was your husband going to leave you for her? I've seen the photo frame. <laughs> he thinks I'm stupid. But women sense these things. <laughs> dame. Don't know you ditzy dame. If he intended to leave me or if it was just a play. God only knows. I only want to know that he's safe. Well, he lost a lot of blood in a shooting there. Alibi. I think you should come clean with us, Mrs. Black. Your husband is missing, and after our search, I'm willing to call the circumstances suspicious. Can you account for your movements last night? You're not accusing me, are you? Oh, what an awful thing to say. I was here all night, of course. <laughs> waiting for eight Sure you were. Home. Playing with the man in the boat, huh? Is there anyone who can vouch for that? Well, no. I, I was here alone. I cooked Adrian's dinner and waited. But he never came home. <laughs> we'll keep you informed, Mrs. Black. Four out of five correct? Not bad. Not do, bad. Detective. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. Grab the phone. R and I could run down an address for Kavanaugh's in no time. All right. Operator, give me dispatch. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? I need an address on a Kavanaugh's bar. Certainly, Detective. One moment. Kavanaugh's bar, corner of Aliso and Hewitt. Got it. South side of Union Station. Thanks, ma'am. <laughs> he just slams the fucking phone. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to get out of my way, dude? I love the fedora.
All right, let's set the Kavanaugh's destination. And let's go ahead and pause. <laughs> pause the game. And bring up tonight's topic. I, I hate to pause in the middle of a case like that, but I, I'm, I didn't realize I, I'm running way behind, which happens all the time because I'm a drunk bastard. So let's bring up tonight's topic, the crime movies of the century. No, <laughs> the, but my favorite crime movies. Uh, yes. So I, I don't really, I didn't really go like straight noir. I could have, but, um, I'm r not really a noir expert. There's other, other YouTubers out there that are, uh, I just went like criminal movies. So, um, uh, first things first, I just want to say the greatest criminal mastermind of all, or prob probably in movies, the greatest criminal, um, before Heath Ledger in as the Joker. <laughs> uh, well, let's talk a little bit about the greatest criminal of all time. Yes. <laughs> the Jews. I am. They call me the Jews. Yes, this guy's the greatest criminal of all time. Well, that was a little bit of a joke. Uh, it's kind of like uh, going along with the uh, John Elway from last week. But seriously, how did this guy get off? <laughs> I can tell you exactly where I was when the verdict came down. I was in Spanish class, second period of high school. <laughs> like, or it might not have been second period, but I was in Spanish class. My my teacher, when it, when it came down, we all watched it when the jury came back. And I was like, my my Spanish teacher was like, "Ay, caramba! Oh, Dios mío!" <laughs> uh, you gotta love OJ. Uh no, but for real now, let's let's actually let's actually talk about uh crime movies. Um the first movie on my favorite crime movies of all time is The Untouchables. Uh look at these just look at these look at these fucking pimps right here. <laughs> Especially Sean Connery like uh I just I I I would love to just get this picture and frame it and put it on my fucking wall. I mean, what a fucking great movie this is. Um, let me, let me review my notes. Cause I took extensive notes this week. I actually did some research. Can you believe that? Uh, you probably can't, but yeah, I actually did some research. So I, I've seen untouchables countless amount of times. I didn't actually rewatch any of these movies this week, um, in between streams. Um, but I can remember most of it and I, I did I did do some research and, and watched uh some critiques and stuff on it which um first of all the uh Elliot Ness is like the the but uh, he, he does a great job or Kevin Costner Elliot Ness is he's like the boy scout and and the, the beauty of the untouchables is this is like a young fresh uh untainted Elliot Ness cop who just wants to do good he's a boy scout and he gets mentored <clears throat> by sean connery's character who is a beat cop uh an old irish beat cop that that what unfortunately her <laughs> funny enough he speaks in a scottish accent but um yeah and he gets mentored by him and and they're like total opposite uh sean connery's character is old school rough and tumble kind of like this um, kind of like stuff you would see in L.A. in the 40s um, when you ever think of like noir movies or whatever. Uh, yeah, so, and, and it's funny to see how um, Elliot Ness struggles with, with that, uh, oh, like in the ending scene where, where um, they're in the courthouse, he's chasing that dude. And he wants to pull the trigger, and Sean Connery would have fucking pulled the trigger, but Elliot Ness does not. He doesn't kill him. It's almost like he he he's struggling with with you know with the do I do what my uh, father or my mentor told me you know to be a fucking you know to break the law to to get justice or or to just you know uh, play it by the rules you know, and ultimately he he decides not to uh pull the trigger which he maintains like a sense of innocence i don't know how how much better to describe it um justice without you know the dirty underbelly 
of of justice um which props to him for that i guess uh sean connery won an oscar for this fucking movie and i think that he won it because of his death scene his death scene is fucking great I mean, it's so over the top it's fucking hilarious though i'm and and then of course it leads to the line of what are you prepared to do <laughs> Is 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 the bookkeeper on this on this train? What are you prepared to do? And he's just bloody as fucking hell and shit. And it's like, um, and and Sean Connery's character is like, he, like I said, he's a mentor. He's kind of like a father to Elliot Ness. Um, the Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro's good in the movie, but I've always thought, like, even the first time I saw this movie, or the first few times I watched this movie way back in the day. I always thought like Robert De Niro was kind of phoning it in in this movie. He does a great job, but I mean, when Robert De Niro phones it in, it's still a good job. So that just shows you how good of an actor is, um, actor he is. But I always felt like, like Al Capone was like a non-factor in this movie. He doesn't really interact with Elliot Ness at all, except in the courtroom. And it just goes to show you this movie is not about. Al Capone it, he's more of a like side piece to this movie uh this movie's about Ali Ness and his innocence and his his search for justice by following the rules whereas everybody around him doesn't really follow the rules you know um as, as far as Al Capone goes or even his mentor um yeah he doesn't really engage in the story like like I said he's more of a, a, a side piece um and then there's the sense of camaraderie between all these boys. Uh, I mean, it's just great. It's like a team. It's like a team that you root for, a sports team or whatever. It's just you're rooting for these four fuckers to, to take these, these gangsters out, you know. And um, there are a couple of great scenes. Like, uh, I mean, how can you forget, like, the border fight? I mean, the border fight is freaking fantastic. And... It just shows you, like, it's almost like they're riding horses to stop these bootleggers. And it's almost like they're, like, cowboys, you know? <laughs> they're on horses. But the Old West is over. But this is, like, the new Old West in the in, in the 1930s as opposed to uh, the 2020s. Uh, that's how I feel. Like, when when I'm watching this movie, it's like, yeah, they're Old West fucking gang of, of, of uh, sheriffs or marshals trying to take down the bad guys. And you get that sense uh, from them. Um, and, of course, like, w after the battle's done, my, one of my favorite parts is, like, when when the nerdy guy, I forget his name, but the nerdy guy, like, <laughs> like he sees the bullet holes in the casks of whiskey and shit. <laughs> and he takes a sip. But but before he takes a sip, he, like, looks around to make sure Elliot Ness is <laughs> watching. I mean, I and then he takes a sip, and he's like, woo, speaking of. Speaking of, hold on, I gotta pull my pour myself. I'm done with my beer, my pregame beers. An hour and a half into the fucking show here, I got some I got some good shit tonight. Let me put a few cubes in here. Now I haven't tried this yet. It would, it came recommended. Uh, look. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Lafrage? Lef Lafrog? We'll, we'll call it Lafroeg. Lafroeg? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's comes recommended. Highly recommended. Quarter cask. Uh, it's the perfect marriage of peat and oak. It's scotch whiskey. It smells fantastic. I smelled it earlier. I don't smell it again today. Oof. Or right now. I'm not like a scotch connoisseur, but I've... Ever since I've been doing these live streams, drinking bourbon and scotch that was left over at my house, where was this shit my whole life, you know? I got some Elijah Craig, uh, um, what, 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 what was it? Uh, Kentucky um, rye back there as well. But I figure since we're, we're talking about, I don't know what cops drink, what, <laughs> what the tech was drink, so I figured scotch. So we're gonna go with scotch tonight. What else is there? The 
oh, the baseball bat scene. It, that now I, I, I made not made fun of, but I criticized. I criticized uh, Robert De Niro earlier for kind of phoning it in, or at least that's what it seems like to me. Although I, I've read, I've read the trivia or not trivia but the you know the noteworthy stuff on imdb and he actually like got really into the character just i don't know it just seems like he phoned it in but in this scene with the baseball bat you know fucking brutal man and that fucking sound effect they use when when he fucking just totally fucking beats the dude over the head with the baseball bat i want him dead (laughs) and i want to piss on his ashes oh that's great um, the train station scene, the union station scene with the fucking baby carriage going down the stairwell. And of course, Elliot Ness saves the baby and saves the day. You know, uh, it's uh, in the suspense with that baby carriage just going down each step. I'm just waiting for a baby to just fucking fly out of it. you know. <laughs> but it never does. Uh, although in I think one of the naked guns, I forget which one, I think it was two or three. Um yeah, the baby does fly out, and OJ catches it, and then OJ does a touchdown dance. <laughs> uh, we got, we have to bring up OJ, right? Yeah, OJ catches the baby at the train station, and then he he like does the icky shuffle with it, and then then spikes it. Um, yeah, so OJ's a a murderer in more ways than one. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, oh, the memorable lines in this movie. I mean, I mean, where do you start? Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. Yikes. That stuff's dangerous. That's good. Woof. That's got some smoke to it. <laughs> I I read the back of the label there. Um, It does have smoke. Wow. That's good stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> when when they're they're coming to kill uh, Sean Connery, he's like, just like a wop to bring a knife to a gunfight. And then you think it's like, okay, he, he said the WAP line. And then he then he follows it up with, get out of here, you dago bastard. <laughs> and then he gets shot down by a Tommy gun. He gets fucking pummeled by a Tommy gun. They're all from Sean Connery. I think every line in this movie is, is great from Sean Connery. It's, uh, 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 when he sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. <laughs> If you're cold, stomp your feet. You're part of no good rich. <laughs> you dago bastard. Uh, he really hates the dagos. Um, yeah, so that's what, that's pretty much all I have to uh, like say about uh, the Untouchables. It's a great action. I mean, it's not it's not like ultra violent in any way, and it and it, it's it's got its little special place in my heart. It's always been one of my favorite movies. I always watch it when it was on back when I was uh, growing up. Every time I saw it on, I I would turn it on. So, yeah, that's that's about it for The Untouchables. If uh, any other um What was Nitty's death? I don't remember. Um but I'm sure you'll you'll enlighten me there. It's been a long time since I've seen this movie, too. But yeah, uh Oh, when he yeah, when he sees <laughs> when he sees uh, Andy Garcia for the first time, uh, when they're interviewing Andy Garcia, and he's like, "You're part of no good. With you. You're a thieving wop." <laughs> uh, and Andy Garcia does a great job in this movie. I think this is w- one of Andy Garcia's first movies, and I think this is before Godfather Three. And just a si- quick side note: Godfather Three, I think. Every actor does a terrible job in that movie. I just recently w- rewatched it, and I think all the acting's awful. Even Al Pacino. Um, uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, he died sc- screaming like a stuck Irish pig. Did he sound anything like that? Yes, that okay. That that's a great line too. But yeah, the acting in in Godfather Three I thought was awful, including Andy Garcia. Come to find out, Andy Garcia was nominated for. An acting award in Godfather 3. Go figure. I thought it was terrible. Um, But Sean Connery definitely definitely deserved an Oscar for this movie. Which he did get. Um, And I would say that the nerd does does a great job as well. 
Um, forgive me for not knowing his name, but yeah. So, okay. Well, I guess that's it for the untouchables. I'm going to be, <laughs> my schedule's all screwed up. We're going to have to jump into something quick after, or maybe after we solve this case. So <laughs> let's jump back into the game. All right, where were we? We were driving somewhere. Jesus, I'm glad to be out of there. Mr. and Mrs. Black don't seem to have the happiest home life. He's too scared to divorce her, and she's too much of a shrinking violet to throw him out. If this hadn't happened, they could have stayed miserable together forever. Sounds like 90% of the married couples sure I know. Seem to type. Some stranger things have happened. <laughs> Crazy drunk driver. Get out of my way. Should we take the high road or the low road? <laughs> We're going to wait at the light. Oh, boy. Some of these lights are fucking ridiculously long. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculously. <laughs> oh, shit. That's my cue. Sorry, I was looking at my iPhone. Ridiculous. Oh, I tried to avoid it. We're traffic cops and we can't even fucking drive. Although in LA in the 40s, it looks like there was like no rhyme or fucking reason to traffic laws. Like some of these intersections don't even have lights to them or stop signs. It's just like go as you please. <laughs> Union Station. All right, let's talk to these low lives. <laughs> yeah, I know you. No, you don't. Are you sure? We were at school together. How, how about you buy me a drink? I missed the top of the hour. Can we buy him a drink or not? Yeah, you and me go way back. Way, way back. Ain't that right? All right, this dude's drunk. Two club sandwich. Looking for someone? Hate your waitress. You want a tip? Refill my coffee fast. <laughs> what a dick. Let's talk to the bartender. You know Frank Morgan? Sure. Frank's a regular. He's a loner in the back. Okay. Right there's the cover. That's another instant. Look at everybody's fucking smoking. Every fucking character <laughs> smoke. <laughs> um, that's the that's the the character of or the uh, perfect embodiment of in through the outdoor cover right there. <laughs> okay, where's the loser in back? Frank Morgan. Who's asking? LAPD cocksucker. Cole Phelps, LAPD. I understand you're a friend of Adrian Black. Yeah, I know him. Are you gonna that he's missing? Yeah, Uncle Albert, I'm going to smack him up oh, like he's fucking that. Billy Bob Thornton in Tombstone. <laughs> Skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. Uh, link to abandoned vehicle. We found Black's car abandoned in a freight depot. Why has it got to be Black? In blood. Do you know anything about that, Morgan? Hell no. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I like Adrian. He, 
He's a good oh, boss. Please, don't tell me you actually believe this jerk off, Phelps. Ah, <laughs> nice. You broke down there, and you let Black have it. Ooh, I'm a bad boy. That the best you got? Oh, we didn't get that right. When did you last see Adrian? Hell, I don't know. Uh, I had plenty to drink last night. Things are a little sketchy. It's like playing with my brother's kids or something. You're lying, Morgan. What happened to Adrian? I have ten guys who say I was here the whole night. You think you can prove I was there? Bloody pipe, right? It's got to be the bloody pipe. You through making accusations you can't back up? No, we suck. Your excuses don't help. Let's see how you enjoy the LAPD taking an interest in your life. You want my opinion? You tell Morgan. I say he's lying, and whatever hole he's got Adrian stashed in, he's got to go back there sometime. Son of a bitch. There he goes. <laughs> Look at him. He's all sneaky. Thinks he's all sneaky. He doesn't know that Cole, the old bloodhound Cole Phelps is on his case. Sure left his drink in a hurry. Easy, Cole. Better back it off. Bet he wishes he'd rehearsed that story better now. All right, I gotta concentrate. I gotta tell this clown. You got a pretty funny idea of what keeping a low profile means, Phelps. Just a fender bender. Where are you taking us, Mr. Morgan? <laughs> the Ching Me House Spa. All right, we successfully tailed his ass. Now let's go beat his ass. Well, let's check the place out. Come on. Day one of the big time, and you're already tailing drunks home from bars. <laughs> you having fun yet? I told you it was nonstop slam at work like that. Did he go to a rare bookstore? I'm just trying to learn. Oh, come on, Phelps. Save the creepy teeth and pet stuff for Leary. Won't work on that. Oh. F. Morgan. Two. Junior. Jim Morrison's in apartment one. All right. Let's pay our friend a visit. See if he's missed us yet. Who the hell is that? We 
Would you relax? It's the Kappas. Jesus, Adrian, I told you, we're in the clear. I'll get it. Ah, oh, shit. You again. It's over, Morgan. Mr. Black, LAPD, give yourself up now. I knew it. Phelps, go after him. I'll try to hit him off in the car. Remember, he's not in the last resort. There's no point running, Adrian. <laughs> Can we shoot him? Nice roll. Mr. Black, get back here right now. Stop right there, Adrian. It's over, Adrian. Why not just come clean with her? Black? Thanks for waiting up Why for me. Nice so sweater, dude. I thought it would be easier. No, it just got a whole lot harder. Adrian Black, you're under arrest for conspiracy and fraud. We'll see what the DA has to say about wasting police resources on a wild goose chase like this. You're going to lose your wife, lose your job, and probably end up in the big house. I hope she was worth it, Adrian. Her pussy lips were lined with gold. That turned out to be quite some case, huh? Adrian, what an idiot. You got an arrest and a clearance in your first case, and in fine style, too. Well done, detective. Efficient investigation technique, good public presence. You keep that up, and you learn from Bukowski here. You can go a long fuck, way in this case. Fuck Bukowski. Ouch, we only got half the questions right. Only cost the city $110 and 1373 in vehicle damage. Yeah, we needed better questioning. But that's always the case in this fucking game. Okay, we're going to keep this short. I'm already late for the DA. First up, Phelps, Bukowski. We got a report of a brand new Packard abandoned in an empty lot off 2nd Street between Olive and Grand. DR is one Oswald Jacobs says the vehicle was dumped in his backyard. There's a patrolman on site. Get down there and see what you can turn up. Any questions? Good. Get going. <laughs> yes, I have a few. Better go earn our pathetic wages. Rimsky O'Halloran. Intelligence has information on a stolen car. Oh, Hanrahan, what are you doing? Nothing. You catch all the good ones, huh, Phelps? Sounds like there's more to it than that. Nobody dumps a shiny new packet unless they borrowed it without asking. You don't say. You're on fire today, aren't you? Very funny. Come on, man. Don't hurt again. Let's go save the world. Yeah, why don't you get in the car? F fuck you, then. Get in the car, buddy. Get in the car. <laughs> you hear about Adrian? Fraud in Seattle threw him out. Wife says she's gonna take him back. Women generally show more compassion. What are you talking about? Adrian dumped on her. He was humping the secretary. Margaret should show some pride. Pride comes before a fall, Bukowski. Talking from experience. Man, is everybody in this fucking town as drunk as I am?
Where's the guy got to go to get laid around this town? Okay, I got to go up top. See, we're down below. Oh, there. I got to go up top. How do I get up top? Oops. Watch it. <laughs> there we go. Now we're up top. Now we're cooking with gas. We got a little air time in this Buick or whatever the hell it is. Oh, shit. Jacob's backyard. You never get me, Kappa. Phelps, traffic. I'm Officer Houlihan. Cars down the alleyway, Detective. Is it a prerequisite to be Irish and it be a cop? We got a call about an abandoned vehicle. Yes, sir. The car has flags. Might be some kind of diplomatic vehicle. Has anyone touched this vehicle since you arrived? No. And that Jacob's bird over there was on station before I got here. We'll talk with him in a moment. Give us some time to look the place over. Sure, take your time. He's a sore-headed old son of a bitch anyway. <laughs> I don't want to talk to him. All right. It's registered. A Packard. By the Argentinian Embassy. <laughs> Interesting. It's yeah, somebody stole the fucking white walls. Stealing the wheels is for amateurs. Uh, Car ring would have been a warehouse. That's for Quakers. I get, I got a guy on the other line about some white walls. No plate. I heard a little ding when I went around this side. I keep hearing a ding. Okay, I guess nothing. The spare tire's missing. Cigarettes. Oh, it's signed by Babe Ruth. Doesn't look like anything. What the hell is that? A cup? Ooh, a wrench. Oh, I already know who did it. It was Lugnut Larry. Combination wrench. I'll have to use it to remove the wheel lugs. Yep, it was Lugnut Larry, all right. Yeah, but we can use it as a weapon to beat down criminals, right? Anything else? I don't see anything else. Why is he running?
There's still stuff to investigate according to the music, right? <laughs> A beer bottle. Ooh, root beer. Probably not. No. Nah. You there, Broad. I don't know why you're doing that, buddy, but I wish you'd stop. This is a crime scene. All of you move along. <laughs> move along, sir. More beer bottles. Oh, we already did that. Okay. All right, should we talk to the old codger? Well, let's check out his house first. Oh, never mind. That's right. Oswald Cobblepot. What exactly <laughs> happened here, Mr. Jacob? Last night, I was looking out of my window. I like to keep an eye on what's going on. I can understand that. You see this empty lot? Damn kids play stickball here. Always breaking my windows. I'm breaking my Always balls. Always for their ball back. Can we get back to the car, Mr. Jacobs? Don't be impatient, Sonny. Anyway, last night, I see this brand spanking new Packard up on bricks. Did you see who stole the Packard? Hell yes, I did. I saw three goddamn Mexicans going to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Hubcap Henry and Lugnut Larry. Mm. Can you tell us what they were doing? Using the headlights of an old Ford so they could strip the thing. I yelled out to them, I'll call the cops. So they loaded up their car and drove off. Tooting and hollering and yelling obscenities at me in Mexican. You Pen speak Spanish? Pendejo? No, I do not. After the uh, Mexicans left, you didn't go anywhere near the car? After I scared them off? No, I didn't go anywhere near that car. So you scared a bunch of Mexicans off, huh, buddy? You went out to the car. Once they were gone, you had to take a look for yourself. I was curious. Yeah. Feel law gotcha. That. Dead to so rights. What if I took a look around that car? You can't be accusing me of nothing. This guy looks like the dad from Six Feet Under. Nice, nice sweater, dude. What exactly did you see them take? They was working on the tires. That's all that was took. The white walls. Did you see them take anything else? Nope. I don't think so. How did I get that wrong? Tell me about the car they were driving. It was an old Ford. I didn't catch the license number. Hmm. He looks pretty stoic there. I'm going to say he's telling the truth. You look like the kind of guy who notices details. You're right there. The car was old, but it looked brand new. Candy apple red paint job stands out a mile. Thank you for your help. I got it right. You can speak to Officer Tabot about signing a formal statement. When you get the car out of the way... If you could come back and do something about those kids. Well, how about we bring you an umpire's mask? <laughs> Jacob dumped the book he was reading in a hurry when we walked up. You curious what he didn't want us to see? Dump the book. Juan Francisco Valdez. Okay, so we have the owner of the vehicle, a degenerate. I'll run John Madsen by R and I. Oh, 
What about all these other names? Bill Dewey. Contact details on a William Dewey. This looks like business rather than pleasure. I think we've run this place dry. Find a game well. Can we take the Argentinian car? That's much better than our piece of junk. You coming? We need a game well, Phelps. What's a game well? I'm following you, buddy. Oh, it's the phone. <laughs> Cole Phelps, batch twelve forty seven. Could you run the name Dewey Brothers? Possibly a dealership or car mechanics workshop. One moment. Dewey Brothers Packard Dealership, 629 Figueroa Street. Got it. Figaro. Can you put me through to Michigan 2458, please? Oh, yeah. Connecting you now. Detroit, Michigan. Hello, can I help you? LAPD, ma'am. Can I speak to John Madsen, please? He's at school, officer. Uh, what's this about? Is he in trouble? How old is your boy, ma'am? Just turned 16. Wrong person, Mrs. Madsen. Sorry to disturb you. Any messages? There's just one message for you, Detective. A four-door Packard diplomatic license number, Paul Robert 706 was reported missing this morning by Juan Francisco Valdez. Could you have him brought in? He's already here at Central Detective. He's demanding an audience, as he calls it. An audiencia. Thanks. Can you get a message to Captain Leary? Tell him we'll be in as soon as we can. Thanks. Okay, boyo. Can you cordon off this lot until we have the vehicle impounded? Yes, sir, Detective. We'll follow up on the owner. Get a statement from Jacobs, and I'll read your report back at the station. <laughs> the game's glitching out. He's always running when he's not supposed to be running. He's got the runs. We can visit the Packard dealership or head back to Central and interview this Valdez character. Your call. Oh, that's... No, no, no. Let's go back to the station, right? This has got to be the 50th abandoned vehicle call we have got this year. One more. Now look what you've done. Ouch. I didn't see that wall there. <laughs> your favorite cases. You kidding me? This is barely even police work. Of all the bad guys in this city, we get lumped with the ones who can't even be bothered. <laughs> what, to fuck? what a struggle fest. <laughs> I wonder what the locals are fucking... Oh, that's great. That's good shit right there. I was so close too. Do we have a Juan Francisco Valdez in for questioning? Sure do, Phelps. Your bird's an interview too. And get this, he's wearing gloves and doing his best not to touch anything. Can you beat that? <laughs> he's afraid of the coronavirus. It's this way. Let's go spit in his face. It's in the papers. About time. Are you the Look at this swarthy gentleman right here. I'm Detective Phelps and this is Detective Kowski. Have you any idea how long I've been waiting to speak with you? I am needed back at the consulate and you keep me here like a common criminal. All right, friend. Let's take a deep breath and start all over again. Mr. Baldess. Council General. 
Juan Valdez. On my full title. Where did you purchase the car? My secretary and driver arranged the purchase. A disreputable place, a Dewey brother by name. As soon as I can have it arranged, I will have my Hispano Suiza brought up from Buenos Aires. Okay. Do we, bro? You think someone from the garage could have been involved in the theft? It would not surprise me in the least. Ha, I, so I got it wrong, but whatever. Consul General, we have located your car. Can you tell us how it was stolen? It must have been stolen from the consul garage. Terribly inconvenient, of course. I want the perpetrator soundly flogged. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't do that here, Your Worship. We just beat the shit out of them. We don't need whips. Uh, I don't know. Let's try using an intuition point. Should we ask then the community? Seventy-eight percent doubt this one. Okay. You have a pretty good idea who stole the car, don't you, Consul General? Are you going to tell me, or do I shake it out of it you? It was the damn There's Mexicans. No for violence. I suspect a disgruntled boy from the car dealership. You have a name for this kid? Gabriel, like the Archangel. I have no surname. So tell us about this kid, Gabriel. You had a... <laughs> Gabriel. With him? Mechanico. A presumptuous young man who did not know his place. He presumed to ask me questions. Well, we do a lot of presuming here in the United States, Consul General. It comes with the turf. So a Consul General gets in a public row with a junior car mechanic. You expect me to believe that that's all that happened? I expect you to draw your own conclusion. And to discontinue Ouch. this aggressive behavior. Hmm? I'll be talking to the gangster squad about you, Valdez. They're gonna love your diary. There's no rhyme or reason to like the right or wrong answers. It's just total fucking guess. Kidding? I could save all year and never afford that. I finished with Valdez. Thank God. I know I'll get rid of him in a couple of hours. <laughs> took a swipe at me, I put him down with my staff. Well, let's go to Dewey Brothers. Something tells me we should have gone to Dewey Brothers first. You're a goddamn menace! Valdez moves in some peculiar circles for an international bon vivant. He makes some, uh, he makes some good drinks. coffee, too. See, this is why nobody invites you out for drinks. It's just very industrious of him to be so involved in matters of consular transportation. All right, you're making it worse now. I think what you're trying to say is that lover boy in there is as full of crap as a Christmas goose. That is well. That is gross. All units, officers, you have Major 415, 1624 West 3rd Street. All right. We didn't hit anybody that time. I need a lube jab. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You're a 
making your way past the lot, caught sight of the new model four door and couldn't help yourself. <sighs> you could see yourself in that car and just had to take a closer look. Well, I can't say as I blame you. <laughs> LAPD, Mac. We'd like to speak with the owner. That's me, William Dewey, proprietor at your service. Do you have any uh, DeLoreans? Packers belonging to the Argentine Embassy. Are you missing a combination wrench? I don't know, detective, but I know how we can find out. Follow me. Do we have to? We keep all our tools in here. Uh oh. We look around. Be my guest. You sure you guys aren't interested in a new car? Huh? <laughs> Maybe a used car. I have some nice used cars for guys in your wage bracket. Why don't you give us some alone time, Dewey? Go sell some cars or whatever it is that you do here. That looks like a three quarter inch wrench to me. Oh, boo. That's not right. Wrong size. This is just, just a little guy. One left. Let me guess. Gabriel. Gabriel Delgado is missing a three quarter. <laughs> nice. A ball peen hammer. Hmm. Don't think this is any use to us. I bet abroad's been driving this auto. <laughs> the clutch is a mess. Abroad. Optimistic call. Seems irrelevant. Should we grab his wiener? Oh, there's the missing plates. Not much help. What? There's supposedly another clue in here that I'm missing. That's the ball peen hammer. Maybe. No. Oh, there we go. These plates. Is there any Argentinian plates on the wall? No good. We need diplomatic plates. Well, I don't know what I'm missing. Is 
Yeah, we looked at that. Can we talk to this guy? I bet abroad's been driving this auto. The clutch is a mess. Okay. We're out of here. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. Do you have any associations with Juan Valdez? Packards are great cars. But this doesn't look like the kind of place favored by foreign embassies. How do you know about that? I don't know Valdez. The embassy bought the car. All I know is he must know a quality car when he sees one. That's... <sighs> God, that looks like a guilty look to me. Um, let's hold on. So Valdez was just driving by and he saw the car. Yeah, something like that happens all the time. <laughs> Got it wrong. Where can we find Delgado? I don't know. Sure as hell isn't here. Uh oh, you're lying, buddy. You're lying. You got him holed up somewhere. I'm having nothing to do with that kid. You can't prove any different. Son of a bitch. Oh, uh, he. Okay. kid's temper's like a time bomb. I want nothing more to do with him or you. A wrench from this dealership was used to strip the wheels from a Packard last night, Mr. Dewey. A couple of Hispanics were seen taking parts. We've had a spate of thefts ourselves. Comes with the location. Even bastards are stealing anything the minute your back is turned. Stop lying to me, Dewey. The thieves work for you. You can't prove that. Go ahead and try. The stolen wrench. Like I said, my tools get stolen on a regular basis. You don't want to believe me? I'm not going to say anymore. You got that wrong, too? Wonderful. I'll be keeping an eye on you, Dewey, and spreading the word that you don't like to cooperate with the LAPD. Do you got any suggestions, partner? No? <laughs> okay. I was supposed to find, like, a license plate or something. I'm going to go check again. I was supposed to find something in here. Oh well. He's got a pimp limp.
Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, detective? I need an address for a Gabriel Delgado. Delgado. Last known address has him living with a common law wife. 103 Hill Street, so, apartment three. There's only one. I take more time over the Packers, Phelps. Let's head back to the empty lot. <laughs> There's there's only one Gabriel Delgado in all of LA. I find that highly unbelievable. Trains. You read the story in the examiner about the Navy developing three dimensional movies? <laughs> What's that? What's you know, like a graph. Vertical axis is Y and horizontal is X. Well, that's clear as mud. Third dimension would be Z. So things will be popping out of the screen. Awesome. That's ridiculous. Scare people out of the theater. God's name would want that. I don't know. Off the idea of talkies, talkies. Get you know, out, this isn't a tank, Phelps. Get out of the way, bro. Come on, dude. Slow down. <laughs> this guy drives like a fucking maniac. <laughs> Say for himself. No. I just hope our archangel hasn't already flown. What the hell is this guy doing? What apartment is old Gabriel in? It's always two, right? Uh, where do you see a number three marked on that door? <laughs> that was wrong. Police, open up. FBI, open up. Yes. LAPD, ma'am. We're looking for Gabriel Delgado. Gabriel? We're from the police. Policia, you understand? Yes, I understand. Could you come inside? What is your name? Ana Rodriguez. Is Rodriguez. Here? Ms. Rodriguez? No. What do you want with Gabriel? Is he in trouble? Stay where you are, Miss Rodriguez. We need to take a look around. But he is not here. I have told you. Check out the surrounds. I'll stay with the broad. <laughs> have a seat, broad. So how far along are you, Anna? Nearly 20 weeks. Right. So how's it going to be when you go into labor and he's not around? You are wrong about Gabriel. He will be a good father. Already he worked hard to provide for us. Unless you help us here, Anna, your little one won't be seeing Papa for a very long time. I doubt it. Everything here is going to be relevant. A stogie.
This looks relevant. It'll take a smarter man than me to connect that. What? Serving breakfast for two, Anna? You should have cleared up. Uh-oh. There's a Packard. Difficult to tell whether it's the suspect vehicle from the scene. Uh, certainly Gabriel's pride and joy. Really ought to take more time over the Packard, Phelps. Let's head back to the empty lot. Is he, is it he telling me to leave? I think he is. I missed something. All right. Well, before we go there, we better get on the next. It won't let me go there. Hold on. Okay. Well, it won't, it won't let me go there. We're in the middle of a pandemic. So my partner's telling me to go back to the empty lot, but it won't let me do it, so. Can't go in that door. Can't go in that door. I went through that room. I went through this room. What about out back? Whoa. Hold on now. The license plate's going to be in here. Oh, none of this shit's relevant. This doesn't pertain to the case. <laughs> no shit. The wheels do, though. The white walls. There it is. Valdez gets his wheel back. Diplomatic license plates. All right, let's go put the screws to this chica. All right, lady, you better start talking. You're in serious trouble. Gabriel is not here. I have done nothing wrong. Tell us the truth, Anna. Has Gabriel been here? I haven't seen him for at least three nights. Yeah, that's a lie, bitch. You keep lying to me, and I'll send you and your baby to jail. Damn, Cole. He lives here, but he hasn't come home. I swear it. Breakfast. That's not your brain. That's breakfast. Enough, Anna. There are signs all over this place that he's been back. She is eating for he two, technically. I have never seen him so angry. He went out to his shed and put some things in it. I don't know what and I don't want to know. I love him. Oh, I love him. <laughs> Why did he steal the car, Anna? The customer insulted him. 
He has his honor, no? Gabriel's been in trouble before. He left you here alone to answer for him, and you expect me to believe that his motive was honor? Please don't yell at me. I've done nothing wrong. <laughs> we found a license plate matching our stolen vehicle in the shed. Add in the assortment of parts, and we can make Gabriel for a dozen other thefts. It's time to get serious, Anna. You must ask these questions of Gabriel. Where is I he? I know nothing of these car parts. See, I... What's... Then tell us where he is. There's no rhyme or reason. Your born in prison, Anna. The corrections officers will take it from you. You will see your son or daughter through a metal grate for half an hour a week. <laughs> the start line is on First and Santa Fe. There is a spillway under the bridge that leads to the river. Many policia have wrecked trying to follow him. Was it a threat? We will put in a good word for you, Anna. As far as we're concerned, this sits with Gabriel. Start line? That sounds like a street race to me. Gotten out of hand this last year. No wonder Delgado has such an eye on the final. You know where the kid is. Let's go stop these clowns and get him off the street. All right. <laughs> we need to move on to the topic. I've only gotten one done so far. Jeez. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I was talking about the Untouchables, but uh, let's move on to Road to Perdition, which is probably one of my favorite movies um, of all time. I I got extensive notes on this one, too. Hold on. Hold on. No. No. We could talk about Night Court. I still have my notes on Night Court. <laughs> um, this movie's great uh, for many reasons. One, it's, it's Tom Hanks is so very different in this in this movie uh he is acting like usually tom hanks characters are kind of like the same in every freaking movie but this one he's completely different uh it's got like a dark side to it um uh yeah so he he's totally different which is kind of like a shock i remember seeing this for the first time like that's fucking tom hanks uh there it's like a father-son story and from what i what i get from it well this movie was based on a comic book by the way i gotta give props to the comic book um it's a father's son story in many ways i i like to call it a trichotomy i don't know if there's like a word you know dichotomy but there's three um there's first of all there's uh, uh his name's mike sullivan uh tom hanks and his son and then you then paul newman and his dirtbag son uh, uh daniel craig <laughs> and then if you think about it, the third father son relationship is Paul Newman and uh, Mike Sullivan or Tom Hanks. I always find that interesting that um, they got that three three a uh, three way gang bang going on as father son relationships there. Um, and what else is there? There's uh, a few scenes in this movie that are just so powerful, um, and I rewatched them on on the YouTube's. One of them is uh, when Tom Hanks' character uh, finally gets to take out uh, Paul Newman's character. It's it's amazing because like Paul Newman's walking out to the car with his gang of thugs surrounding him. It's raining. It's dark. You can't see much. Um, and then you just all you just see flashes from a from a gun, and it takes out every one of his gangsters there's like five or six of them and there's no sound you, you don't hear any gunshots you just see flashes from the tommy gun i believe uh if i can remember correctly you don't hear any sound you just see these guys drop dead getting full full of fucking lead you know and it's so fucking cool and it's dark and then uh, th it's coming out of nowhere. You don't even see Tom Hanks. And then he walks out after he kills all five or six guys that are surrounding fucking Paul Newman. And Paul Newman, the whole scene where his dudes are getting shot up, he doesn't even, he knows. 
it, it's just he knows who it is. He knows it's Sullivan coming back for revenge. Um, he doesn't even turn around. He just knows it's over. And then what's very interesting is how they, they, they mute the sound of the gun. They don't even play any sound of the gun. But when he kills uh, Paul Newman, he comes face to face to him. He walks out of the darkness in the rain. He walks up really close to him and he blows him away. But when he blows Paul Newman away, they put some loud ass fucking gunfire in that. So so there's that silence when he's killing the dudes. And then when he goes to kill Paul Newman, it's just fucking boom, 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 loud as fuck, you know. And then after that scene, now Mike Sullivan's a, a devout Catholic. And he before the scene, he's he's uh, found in the church praying and lighting a candle or whatever it is. He's he's praying. And it's almost like um, he knows his lifestyle, what he's going to hell, but he's praying for like redemption. And when he blows away Paul Newman, after he blows away Paul Newman, he's looking around and you just see these like dis- uh, they're, they're, You can't see their faces. You just see these figures in all the windows in the alleyway that this happened in. And I like to think of, think of those like like almost like angels. Um like looking down in judgment on on Tom Hanks's character. That's why I always get out of that. I mean, it, you don't see their faces. You just see like the f- silhouettes of their their bodies. And I always thought that was pretty profound too. <laughs> so, yeah, so you go from dead silence to loud ass fucking guns and and the figures in the window and there's no blood in that scene whatsoever. It's a violent scene. I mean, with the with the Tommy gun blowing away these guys, but there is no blood whatsoever in that scene. So it just goes to show you you can do some violence without without having like a shit ton of blood blood as opposed to like untouchables where when Sean Connery gets blown away with the Tommy gun, he's just fucking covered from head to toe in red blood, you know. Um The final scene I I, I was I don't know who whose video I watched, I'd love to get credit to him, but it it it's almost like he arrives um, when they arrive to the lake house or the the house on the beach and the kid goes to play with the dog and Tom Hanks walks into the the cottage and he, he walks up to the uh, window and looks out at his son playing with the dog and everything gets really bright, like super bright white, you know, it's almost like black and white, which is in, and it's mainly white and it's just bright and, and it's almost like um like that's like Mike Sullivan's in in heaven, you know, that's his heaven. It's just being able to take care of his kid without any uh distractions, without a life of crime. Like he finally made it to his heaven. He finally made it to the promised land. Um but then they turn that around and he gets fucking blown away. He takes two shots in the gut or two or three shots in the gut from Jude Law's character, which Jude Law's character is like He's he's the assassin. He's like he's like uh, the devil. If you're looking at this from a religious perspective or a Catholic perspective, he's like the fucking devil. Like he's disfigured. He's he he's he's a psychopath. He takes he he's takes joy in taking pictures of like dead bodies, and he has that shrapnel in his face. And if you look at his face really close, he's like disfigured, almost like like a demon or or the devil. And he blows away, uh, or he 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 puts two bullets in in Tom Hanks, and then uh, they do more stuff with the sound, which is awesome. I I th- this movie has such great sound. Um, after he he puts two bullets in Tom Hanks, uh, the kid arrives with a gun in his hand. The kid's pointing it at Jude Law. And this whole time. You're hearing the waves crash on the beach, like just wave after wave after wave. And if you really think about it, you're they're inside the cottage. You might be able to hear muffled waves, maybe if you're lucky, because they're kind of far from the beach. But no, they like the, the sound design or the sound dude, the audio, the audio, the gaffer decided to put. I'm sure that was the director, but decided to put uh, the waves really like pronounced like that's all you hear is waves 
um, and they're really pronounced. And it's like, how could you hear that if we're if the scene takes place inside, a hundred, uh, at least a hundred, probably. I don't know, a hundred and fifty yards away from the beach, and when the kid was playing on the beach, I mean, the the waves weren't that pronounced, but they are in that scene. And I like to look at it as like the waves represent like, like, um, like Tom Hanks knows he's going to die. He, he reached his heaven. The waves are like cleansing him or washing him, washing away all the dirt in his life. Um, and then he finally makes, makes the final sacrifice to, muster the strength to kill the fucking kill Jude Law before the kid kills him and he sees his kid get corrupted so he preserves his kid's innocence so to speak and then his sins are washed away by the waves that's I always like to like to pick that or I always thought that was pretty interesting it's definitely one of the saddest movies I've ever seen I it's brutally sad because like if you look at how how Tom Hanks plays his character, he's like a stoic character. He's not really engaging with his son. Um, they do go on like a six week crime spree and stuff like on the on the run from the law, and their relationship builds and they get closer and closer. It seems like it seems like he was like one of those old school dads that just didn't like you know just provided the food and the shelter and. And the mother was more of the the caregiver and stuff like that. One of those old school things where, but they're just getting getting to like almost know each other for the first time, and they're finally free of all the uh, death and destruction. And then he dies. He gets killed, and it's just sad as fuck. It's a sad fucking movie, that's for sure. Um, yeah, and then I talked about the Jude Law being, being kind of like the devil figure, if you're looking at it as a religious perspective. Uh, Michael, I think St. Michael did fight the devil, if I'm, if I remember my saints, but don't quote me on that. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then, let's see, anything else? Nothing else. I kind of want to speed this along because we got uh, uh, three more to go. And I'm looking at like an hour and 20 minutes. So just you got to watch it. Road to Perdition is freaking great. Daniel Craig's also in it. Daniel Craig plays the shitbag. Uh, the shitbag son of Paul Newman. Almost like Paul Newman likes uh, Mike Sullivan or Tom Hanks better than his actual fucking shitbag son. Who's stealing from him. And Daniel Craig does a good job. Drew Law does a good job. But Tom Hanks steals the show in this one. Um, I was I always thought it was interesting. The last line of the movie is uh, when people ask if my father was a good man or a bad man or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. And he says, I always just answer that he was my father. I, I that's I that it seems profound. I don't really get it, understand it as 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 I should or but I guess it just means he was neutral or, you know, he was my father. I can't judge him as being bad or good or whatever. So, yeah, uh, what a great movie. Great, great sound. Great sound. Uh, it was directed by Sam Mendes. I think he did American Beauty, um, which is a, another great movie. But he likes his rain, but we'll say that. But, yeah, that, that movie's freaking great. Um. And it's sad at the same time. Very, very freaking sad. So that is Road to Perdition. We will jump um, back into this case. Hopefully we'll end this case and then I can pound out another one. Hopefully we're close to the end of it. So let's head back in. Oh, yeah. Epstein, Epstein didn't kill himself. Uh, are we about to drive on some rooftops? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I didn't. What's with this city, man? There's too much elevation in this city.
blood flows red on the highway. Let's catch. Let's stop at the uh, the movie theater. Catch a viewing of uh, Reefer Madness. <laughs> oh, let's just city property. We're good for it. Take it out of my paycheck. Oh shit! I gotta unmute the game. You didn't really hear anything. Just the my uh, partner calling me fucking maniac for driving off the side of a building. <laughs> I know you can put use the police horn, and most of these cars will pull over, but that police horn's just way too loud. Can we cut through here. Oh. Nice. Hi, Chihuahua. Here we go. That's still got him right there. Andale, andale, arriba, arriba. Quick, they're getting away. Phelps, 1247, requesting assistance at first in Santa Fe. Reports of an illegal street. Stay on Delgado. He's getting away. Ah, uh, we lost him. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I thought so. I was doing good there, too, damn it. How far are they going to send us back? It shouldn't be too far. We got him. Dead to rights. Take your top off, honey. They're getting away. Phelps, 1247. Requesting assistance at first at Santa Fe. Reports of an illegal street. Stay on Delgado. Get away. Gonna lose him. There goes my door. Oh, this is where the Terminator s the Terminator scene took place. This this old boat can handle any anything. Now James Phelps, take this guy out. Step on it, Phelps. Take him out. I'm trying, dude. Where'd he go? <laughs> That's a good place to park it. GTA. Fuck you, puto. You should speak to the maricón. Valdez, I showed him. 
Now who's that man? I should have burned his fucking car. You got a foreign dignitary out it as a fruit and a kitty raper. A car dealer <laughs> gonna let slide for the yeah. kickbacks. Matt was right. Punk car thief who sure as hell won't be taking liberties with other people's autos again anytime soon. That detective Phelps is not a bad haul. You keep your chin low and your hands high and you keep bringing me clearances just like that one. That's textbook policing and we need more of it. Not oh, really. <laughs> we did a pretty shitty job. Hey, what the fuck? Let's go get a smoke. Mm, you know what sounds good right now? Pancakes. I missed three clues. Ugh, that's awful fucking questions. So he was a kitty diddler. Hollywood never changes. War. War never changes. You have any plans for Weekend Liberty, Jack? My sisters have been working in Los Angeles in a bomber factory. They're coming down to visit. I'm meeting them at the station at 6. Good for you, Jack. Are they cute? They're my sisters, Hank. Attention! Final inspection before Liberty. Good job, Kelso. Phelps, could you pull your pants up any fucking higher? They're up to your fucking nipples, dude. Are we going somewhere, gentlemen? Yeah, we're, we're going to the circle jerk. It better be exceptional if any of you want liberty this weekend. Cock it in pellet. This carbine. The four is dirty. No, it isn't. Are you arguing with me, Kelsey? Holy what you shit. Need to do, Talk Sergeant. Talk you know back. the boar's immaculate. Weekend liberty canceled. A two-day field drill. Clean this rifle. No. Do you know the penalty for insubordination, Kelso? Jack, don't do it. Forget him, Hank. He doesn't have what it takes. Are you two finished? Are you going to clean this rifle? No, Sergeant. Cole is right. I'm going to stop playing games and join a rifle company and fight the real enemy. Again, I've I've never really got into the backstory. I can't put two and two together. Is Cole like a hard ass or a, a weak one? Marriage made in heaven. Well, I was down on my luck. Oh, whoa. Oh shit! That dude just got nailed. Gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there. See if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. Yeah, the bum took a swipe at me. Put him down with my sap. Mouthpiece tore strips off me at the grand. You got a smoke. We'll have to replay these cases and find out what the fuck we did wrong in those interviews. Alright, let's go uh, investigate the crime scene and then we'll bring up three if our partner... Fuck them. We're taking off. Can you just leave without your partner? It looks like I just did. Come on, swing that boat.
He lost his fedora. Hey, baby. Detectives, over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Because a white male named Lester Patterson walked out of the bar and into the street, car hit over there, and he ended up here, dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, you know, Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Yeah. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now we're going to take a look around. All right, tire tracks, right? Body traveled a good 20 feet. Okay. Careful where you're stepping, Phelps. I don't come down to the station house and tap dance on your desk. I ended on a station <laughs> and ended up here. The car must have struck him from behind. Phelps, you should take a look at the body. The poor guy didn't stand a chance. We'll take his cash too. Notify next of kin. You used to have fingerprints on your on your license? That was pretty interesting. Couple of ducats. We'll take those. No, we won't. Uh oh, a life insurance policy. Sixteen hundred dollars. What the fuck? Madison has life insurance. Why does it say what the fuck? That looked like a hole in him. Open up and say ah. One real quick check. Was it? There's a hole in this jacket. Almost like a bullet hole. Was I supposed to do anything in this? Nope. Does he got a wedding ring too? Bruises. And just for posterity, let's check the other arm. He's got the mark of the... What do they call that? Jesus' wounds. Stigmata. <laughs> what have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I'd done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Oh, it's Fedora. Just the facts, ma'am. Has he got anything inside it? No, no. We checked out those tire tracks. What's this? This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. Like a bat out of hell. Like a bat out of hell. Meatloaf. God rest his soul. Rest in peace, Meatloaf. So the driver managed to brake before the impact. So he wasn't trying to kill him? Is that what you're saying? It's all yours, Detective. Miss Perry? Yes? Steve Perry? Phelps. 
This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Yes, I did. I was wondering if somebody was going to catch that. Do you, can you see the other one? You probably can't see the other one. Yeah, you can. It's right over my shoulder. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. Dark red Lincoln Continental? Why would she lie? Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. Three, C, eight. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. Yep, Cargo Noir. A man and a woman. That's all. You ever notice that L.A. Noir, the game, this video game spells Noir wrong? Like, did anybody do their research? <laughs> um, I didn't. What did she say? Okay, argument over witness report on overhearing an argument prior to. I don't know. Um. Go on. Then a third person, another man, got involved. Thank you, Miss Barry. Your information has been very helpful. Well, we got that one wrong. We can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. We will. Just the facts, ma'am. Certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. I'm a pimp. A rest, What's the hat? Let's see what the patients have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. <laughs> I'll take the bartender. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna of Mrs. Patterson home. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. God. Oh, man. I want to say doubt. Oh, I was right. Damn it. What was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Mr. and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. Do you know the victim? Yeah. Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but <laughs> not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. I drink he alone. His wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? We got dirty laundry. it about who knows the slightest thing could set those two off thanks for your help lynch i'm gonna need you to sign a statement with the patrolman sure no problem you get anything out of the regulars they weren't giving too much away they like watching lester and lorna go a few rounds every other day and lester was a fan of the love tap <laughs> what does that mean Okay. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge twelve forty seven. How can I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, three Charles eight. Cross check possible Lincoln owner. Suspect vehicle is a red Ooh, Lincoln Continental. Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, nice. Detective. Bill. 
738 West Temple Street. Got it. Thanks for your help. Looks like we caught a break on this one. Why'd you go out the back door, Phelps? <laughs> oh, I heard a clue. Oh. Steak knife. This is a hit and run. <laughs> Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. I they know who did it. Tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bagged the knife. It was Michael Myers. That's who did it. Anything else you want to tell me? No. I'll have some prints ready for your report if you let me get on with there this. It okay. All right. Let's hop in the... That's not our car. Where's our car? Okay, that's our car. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm going to pause, and let's get back to the thing. I'm, I'm, i am I got to get through three now in one hour. Great. So, um, without further ado, number three, Sunset Boulevard. Then This is a classic. Um, I guess this would fit the noir uh, theme for tonight, or if, go along with L.A. noir. Um, what's... Uh, where do you begin with this movie? This is one of my favorites. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Uh, there's so much about this movie. Let's just take some of the noir elements. Like you got the the down on your luck protagonist, um, the writer um, uh, Joe Gillis. He's down on his luck. Now he's the narrator, but in the beginning of the movie, he's found de dead floating in the pool. So he's like narrating from the afterlife, which is a common element i guess in noir i'm not positive but and then and then of course the whole hollywood scene uh this was called at at some point somebody referred to it as the definitive hollywood horror film and and i've never looked at, thought about it that way but if you think about it, it is kind of like a hollywood horror film it's a it's a Semi crime movie, but it's more about Hollywood and with the crime just as in the background. Um, and then the horror element is just watching the other main character, Norma Desmond, just like descent into madness. And yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty scary. And uh, this movie was made as more of a critique, as I said, uh, a critique on Hollywood itself. Um, they're constantly criticizing what was going on in Hollywood at the time where they were just making, they were just fucking like churning out shitty movies. Uh, they, it was like an indictment on the studios, not like taking time to create good stories. They were just cranking out shitty movies, kind of like nowadays. <laughs> Hollywood hasn't changed much, that's for sure. Um, and and the whole like idol worship, we're worshiping these actors and actresses like they're idols. Um, yeah, so I mean that that was kind of like like the 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 critiques of Hollywood, and just how like they can just discard you if you're an actor that's washed up. They just discard you, um, only to be resurrected by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> so what? <clears throat> so um, yeah. The uh, things I love about this is, well, first of all, Norma Desmond, it, it's kind of weird. It You feel yourself, this woman is, is was discarded by Hollywood when, when they invented um, 
audio in the movies, like talking. They were able to, they called them talkies at the time. We call them movies now, but she was a silent movie star. And then when the talkies came around, they realized she couldn't act or wasn't believable or whatever. For whatever reason, she or she just grew old in general and they discarded her. And you, you, you feel pity for this lady. But she's so out there and, 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 and psychotic and she slowly, she wants, she's planning this comeback, which never comes. Um, it technically does come in the final scene of the film, but yeah. And, and you don't, and then she's responsible for the death of Joe Gillis. So you, you don't like her, you hate her. But you can't help but feel pity for her because she was just discarded and scarred by the Hollywood machine, you know. Uh, even though she commits this despicable fucking act of, of, of shooting this guy in the back. Um, some thoughts on Joe. Uh, Joe, he's like a down-on-his-luck writer, like I said, and he wants to write good movies. He just doesn't want to just sit behind a desk and churn out shit like, you know, shitty Marvel movies or whatever at the time. Um, and he has no money. He's poor and he, he, he can't get a script. Uh, he can't get a script accepted or whatever. And so he decides to uh, he, he, he actually his car is getting towed. So he ends up landing at Norma Desmond's house and, and she takes him in. To help once she finds out he's a writer, to help him to help her write her comeback movie, and the thing about Joe is, yeah, he gets killed, and you feel sorry for him, but it was all his making because he decided to take advantage of Norma and her generosity, and he lives with her while he's writing her comeback movie, and he's taking advantage of her. He's wearing suits and these fancy suits she buys for him and she kind of falls in love with him. Uh, he's just there for, for the money, you know, and, and for a place to hide out. So he's not exactly 100% like a, a good guy. Um, then there's the love story between him and, and a younger writer. And she's like, um, uh, just a, just a hopeful, I don't, I don't know, cockeyed optimist, <laughs> as, as, as Kramer would say. It was a cockeyed optimist. Um, and then Norma falls in love with Joe, so you got, like, this love triangle going on where Joe loves Betty and Norma loves Joe. And basically, Norma gets the ultimate. Um, it all ends with her. Um, yeah, it's, it's stuff like um, Joe is, like, like some more indictments on Hollywood, like screenwriters are tossed to the side too. Not only actresses and actors, it's almost like everybody in Hollywood. Once you're, once your usefulness, everybody's like a tool. And once your usefulness wears out, you're just discarded into the, into the garbage bin and forgotten to uh, time there. Um, let's see. <sighs> and you, you can't help but feel pity for Norma, but she does some, crazy things and and just um and like i said you, you you can't help but dislike what joe is doing with norma he should have came clean at the beginning like look you know i'm just here for a place to hide out but um gloria swanson plays norma desmond she is fantastic uh, a lot of people think maybe it's kind of over the top but i i don't know i think i think it's great because it, she's just so freaking psychotic and you got to remember, she is playing a, a an actress that was in silent movies, so they had to act with their their eyes and their mouth and their facial expressions and their and their hand gestures. And she plays that like perfectly. Now she apparently I read up, and she was a silent movie star, uh, Gloria Swanson, at some point, and she was terrified of taking this role because it just struck so close to home, but. And then, you know, you got the you got the memorable lines like I'm <laughs> you used to be big. And she's like, I am big It's the pictures that got small. Um, he, uh, one of the funny lines in the movie, there's not much comedy, but one of the funny lines is is, is when he's like, I, Joe's like talking to some girl that just said that his screenplay sucked or Betty 
she comes in and, and she says Joe's screenplay sucked to the to the uh, head of the studio. And Joe goes, oh, yeah, well, I bet you turned down Gone with the Wind. <laughs> and then the head of the studio goes, no, that was me. I was wondering, I, or he's like, I didn't think anybody would want to go see a movie about the Civil War. Uh, that's pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of, I can see the, the, the kind of, like, horror. Um, if you look at it, like, as a descent into madness kind of way. And then, um, of course, the most famous at the end, Norma does get to star in her picture. Only it's not the picture she and Joe wrote. It was the press. This is what I take from it. She's surrounded by press because she just killed a guy. And all the lights are flashing. And she's ready for her close-up, Mr. DeMille. And she thinks, she literally thinks she's in a movie. And all the cameras are there to film the movie but it's cameras from the press and the paparazzi and stuff like that so yeah i just uh it's chilling it's chilling and she's just so bad shit fucking crazy uh and her eyes are just fucking crazy um and there's a couple few plot twists like max uh the the butler throughout the whole movie for for uh norma desmond turns out he was like one of the top three directors in the silent movie era and he actually was her first husband. Um, that's a cool plot twist. Um, yeah, so y- you go from like pity to disgust, pity to disgust, and back to pity again. And it, I actually find myself, I do feel pity for Norma at the end of the movie. Even though she just committed a heinous murder, I do feel pity for her. And I, I do feel sorrow for Joe, but Joe, um, you know, he made his choice. You know, he had he made his bed, so to speak. He has to lie in it. But yeah, if you put all that together with the critiques of Hollywood, the the subtle jabs, the subtle fucking jabs at, at Hollywood, uh, it's a great movie. It's a great movie, and it's also a great musical that I have memorized front to back. I've listened to that musical so many freaking times. I know every line, <laughs> every part, and every every whatever. So yeah, b- between that and the musical is pretty dead pretty goddamn dead on uh following the the movie so yeah and it's it seems like a classic noir i don't know if they can i think i've heard people categorize it as a noir film so i'm gonna go with it i'm gonna trust them and call it a classic noir film so uh that is it for uh the sunset boulevard check it out there's a cool car car chase scene like we do in this fucking game all the fucking time there's a cool car chase scene at the beginning of it too and then Norma Desmond's car is fucking awesome, too. And then, oh, yeah, yeah, there was actual, like, the actual Cecil B. DeMille, like, the greatest director of, of that era. He's actually in the movie himself. And there's a, there's a few other Hollywood stars that are in it. I don't know any of them because I'm not from the 1940s. Uh, so, <laughs> but at the time, they were stars. And it was, I, it was probably, like, a newer thing to see stars playing themselves in movies. Um, nowadays we, we kind of see that more often, but back then uh, I'm sure it was kind of a, a, a little bit of a shock. So we're just going to play another, uh, I don't know, let's say 10 more minutes and we'll pause it again and, and we'll get on to number two. Great movie. Great fucking movie. <laughs> Bullseye brand cigarettes. We don't want to go to the residences yet. Oh, we are at Ray's Cafe. Did I miss something at Ray's Cafe? I didn't think so, but... Let's go to who owns the car. It's a lucky break getting a partial ID. Cases are usually dead in the water after 24 hours if no one comes forward. Why don't they just stop? You heard about fight or flight during the war? Sure. Never back your enemy into a corner. That kind of stuff. What are you right. stopping for? Well, Pickup truck. Perp is already in flight. It's easier to keep going. It takes a degree of moral courage to stop and accept responsibility. Not as dumb as you make yourself out to be. <laughs> I didn't know I was making myself out.
I'm tempted to just, yeah. I don't want to hit anything. I think I was supposed to turn down that. Nice, I didn't hit anything. I'm not drunk after all. Uh oh, it's gonna be a car chase. Uh oh, someone's skipping town. Get him, Kappa. Oh, there's the body tent. That son of a bitch right there. William Shelton? Yes. It doesn't look good, Shelton. You packing your bags and making a run for it? <laughs> you know why we're here. Yes. Catch. The accident. We've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene, not to mention the physical damage. This is open and shut, Shelby. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, fuck. We're going to have to chase him in the car. That coward thinks he can run from everything. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on. Games, Phelps. Take this guy out. No wonder he killed someone who fight him like this. Don't let that asshole get away. Got him. Pinned him, too. Oh eat, I give up. eat shit. That's it. Cuff him and we're done. I want to shoot him. Put your hands in the air. How does a vehicular manslaughter rap sound, Shelton? I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? Someone pushed him. Right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. <laughs> That's it. Like shit in your pants? DA is going to love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to Whatever. Him. I don't trust a man who wears a bow tie and pulls his pants up to his nipples. It's not my fault. The guy is dead. Shelton. You can't be serious. William Shelton. I am serious. And don't call me you can't be. <laughs> Leave the coroner and the paperwork. Procedure can wait. We should probably go speak to the wife and let her know what's happening. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and mark this. And let's pause. Yeah, I'm running out of time. Um, let's bring up the next one. I I knock myself into this corner every time, or or or, or pin myself into this corner. Uh, two. Two, my second favorite crime movie of all time, Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Pulp Fiction, I mean, well, I, I mean, everybody's seen this movie, right? A fucking great movie. Um, a couple of ob observations. Well, Pulp, Pulp uh, Fiction, I mean, the definition of those pulp novels back in the 50s and 40s and 30s and 40s and 50s, 
are just little short stories, and that's what this movie is at its core. It's just a bunch of short stories, and Tarantino had a way to to uh, combine them uh, perfectly, like they lead into e- e- each other. You know, yeah, yeah. I know this was your probably your favorite there, Chuck, but uh, yeah, great fucking movie. And 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 if you look at those old pulp novels, they're just you know fifty pages long or whatever, but they're great. Um, and that's what it is, and it was his love of those novels. And then his love of Hollywood and and everything. And he just found a way to attach them to each other. Uh, which leads me to one of the, the biggest things in this movie is the amount of coincidences in this movie. If you think about it. Um, if you really think about it, that... Um, the, the number... Uh, the amount of coincidences in this movie and how they're so crazy... Um, just, it just, it's just great. Uh, let me just list off a few of them. Um, the fact that, um, well, Butch forgets his, his watch at some point, uh, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Bruce Willis's character, Butch, he forgets his watch and that, that leads to him going back to the house to find it. And it's just a coincidence. He decides to put in a couple of pop tarts in the toaster and he looks on the counter and he sees the fucking whatever gun that is. I don't know my guns. It's like an Uzi or whatever. And then he, he it's just a coincidence that he stumbles upon John Travolta taking a dump in the fucking in the goddamn uh, bathroom. Well, where else would you take a dump? Uh yeah, so that's like coincidence number 1 and then after he leaves, he kills he kills uh what's his face? And this is only halfway through the movie. That's just oh yeah, that's another thing I got to talk about is the, the distorted timeline. It's it's wonderful. I never saw anything like it um, oh, until I saw this movie. Um, but yeah, that happens like halfway through the movie, and then John Travolta's in the movie like later after he dies. Like that's just the way he distorted the timelines and how everything connects and all the little stories connect. Uh, after he, after Butch leaves leaves after killing John Travolta, he goes in the he, he has another coincidence right away where he runs in the uh, he he stops at a stoplight. And there's fucking Marcellus just walking across the street with donuts and coffee. Uh, it's like, what a, what kind of coincidence is that? Where he's, you know, that's a crazy coincidence where he he's uh he just happens to stumble upon the guy that wants him dead, you know. Um, also another coincidence of what the, they happen to go into the one store that have two gay dudes that want to like rape him or whatever in a gimp or what? they just happen to go into that store, you know. Um. And Sam Jackson, or or like, and 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 is it is it Tim Roth, and one of the Arquette went broads, <laughs> one of the Arquette broads, I believe. Um, Any of you fuckers move, and I'll execute every last one of you. Uh, those two just happen to, they're talking about how they want to rob a diner because there's no heroes, but they just happen to rob the diner that Sam Jackson's at, who technically is. Not a hero in their kind of sense. Oh yeah, it's Amanda Plummer. That's right. Okay, um, one the Arquette broad is the one with the with the nose piercings at the at the uh, when they at Eric Stoltz's house. <laughs> so yeah, I got that wrong. But anyways, it's just a coincidence that the one the one hero in their sense is somebody that will stop the robbery, and and it just so happens they they rob a diner thinking there would be no heroes in there. Sam Jackson who's gonna stop the robbery, you know. If he wanted to, um, oh, it's also a coincidence that he doesn't get shot in this picture after that one guy storms out with the gun and, and misses him, fires like eight bullets and misses him, and then Sam Jackson blows away the one guy and it's like, but Sam Jackson, uh, just all of a sudden has like a revelation, like he should have been dead, and um, that's why he he has like a change of heart, and that's why he lets. Uh, Tim Roth and Amanda Plummer go at the end and let them rob everybody else, you know? <laughs> the one that says badass motherfucker on it, you know? Uh, I watched a old review of it, um, Pulp Fiction. I never put two and two together. But the way that he can... Tarantino can pull off these transitions like 
from story to story. Like, if you think about the Butch and his girlfriend story, where they're on the run after he throws the fight, they described it as, and I wish I could give credit to him. I don't think it was anybody famous. Um, I just saw it on the YouTubes. They described it as like some kind of love story on the run, European love story, transitioning. All of a sudden, it transitions into deliverance, and Quentin Tarantino pulls it off. Like the audience believes it. Like at, for one point, we got a, we got like a Bonnie and Clyde are on the run kind of thing, and then all of a sudden, you're in in a fucking gang rape scene <laughs> from Deliverance. Like, and it just in he makes it he does it so well that that you actually sit there and believe it, you know? And it happens all throughout the whole movie. I mean, all these weird transitions um, that maybe a normal director couldn't pull off, but Quentin Tarantino decided, you know, he, he's the man. Uh, he definitely pulled it off. I remember, I mean, first seeing this movie, just the shock of, like, this is totally different than anything I've ever seen in my life. Um just the violence and and, and I was just, I just it's just fucking great. I never understood the um the one thing I never understood about it is the gold the briefcase w- that they open up and it's gold. I wonder what's in that briefcase. I don't know if he's ever answered that. I didn't look into that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> and then uh, I mentioned this earlier, but like when I was talking about Sunset Boulevard and how uh old celebrities are are um. Uh, discarded you know tossed away like yesterday's news unless they are fortunate to make a comeback well this was john travolta's comeback um travolta was known for what fucking one of the sweat hogs and welcome back cotter and saturday night fever and all that and then he kind of like disappeared in the 80s. I, I don't know if he made just a bunch of fucking shitty movies. Um ever since, you know, Saturday Night Fever, you didn't really hear from John Travolta. I, I don't I don't recall. Um but then all of a sudden he shows up in this fucking film playing like a totally fucking dirtbag fucking criminal. And it was kind of a shock value, but it was like his resurrection and and that, that's why I mentioned that Quentin Quentin Tarantino seems to resurrect these old actors that have been discarded, and maybe he could have done some uh, good work with Gloria Swanson or, or uh, Norma Desmond, I should say. Um, yeah, so that's his turn. And then other examples of that in Tarantino movies, there's there's countless amount of them. Um, Kurt, well, not Kurt Russell wasn't really discarded, but uh, yeah, so he he does that a lot. Um, and um, the. What else can we talk about? Oh, the dialogue. Of course, you got the Quentin Tarantino dialogue, which is phenomenal. And this movie does it the best. Reservoir Dogs was kind of like a a hint of things to come. Reservoir Dogs is not the the greatest movie ever. It's a good movie. But I think the, the best parts of the movie are the dialogue in Reservoir Dogs. And then this movie comes out and it's like, holy shit. I mean, it takes it to a whole new level. You hear some you hear some really freaking crazy shit in this movie. Uh and it's fun it's just fun to hear it reminds me of clerks and what kevin smith did with clerks um it's almost like (laughs) it's almost like uh uh if clerks was an action or a crime film it's it would be pulp fiction they they and they came out you know kind of around the same area uh same within a couple years I, i i i think but like you get these just these little solilo- soliloquies that these uh, actors go on, you know the whole royale with cheese and the foot massage con- conversation and 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 then the conversation at, in the in the diner or Jackrabbit Slims or whatever. Um, it's just wonderful, wonderful stuff, and it's so fun to just hear them talk like you know. Like shit bags, <laughs> just totally. And then Quentin Tarantino himself. I mean that that character. Uh, God, I I I won't repeat stuff he says, but it's just amazing. It's just crazy, the 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 dialogues in the in this movie, and then all his movies to come. His movies seem to be known for that. They're almost like Kevin Smith films that have 
action, you know, because like every one of Kevin Smith's films, <laughs> Kevin Smith's films, early films didn't, they were just, that's all they were, were dialogue, you know. It's like this has that plus some, you know. So I always equated those two together, Clerks and Pulp Fiction, as as like that 90s dialogue kind of shit. And, and then it continued on with like stuff like Scream and, you know, all that, that, witty dialogue which, which people don't talk like you know they they don't talk like that um but it, it's always fun to hear and 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 then i also watched a video of uh pulp fiction where somebody or no i i think it was a podcast a segment of a podcast and somebody had a, a great observation that this was kind of like it's almost like you're flipping a remote control from from program to program you know on the on the old tv on the old boob tube so that that does sum up this movie pretty good um another another thing is like the whole oh, another thing i get a kick out of is when travolta's like supposed to show uma thurman a good time and he's just telling everybody or telling Ju- jules that like all we're gonna do is go out to eat i'm gonna take her home <laughs> you know and he almost succeeds at it until she fucking d- decides to snort some heroin or whatever the fuck OD on some fucking on whatever he had in his pocket. So, <laughs> I mean, he was so close, so close to just showing her a good time, leaving and not getting his ass kicked by or killed by uh, Marcellus for flirting with his wife or whatever. And, they, and he was just so close. But they come to an agreement not to not to say anything. So it works out for him in the end. But it's so funny. It's like. How many times does that happen to you in life when you're just like, I just want to get in and out, and that, and then something happens at the very end and fucks you over. You know that happens countless times in my life. So, yeah. So Pulp Fiction, uh, you know, of course the, of course the famous. Oh, the soundtrack was fucking great. And this movie's filled with fucking scumbags, just total fucking scumbag criminals. Just like I can't stand the couple, Honey Bunny fucking couple. I can't stand them. Uh, I wish Jules would have fucking blown him away, to tell you the truth. I always look back on that, and I was like, I wish he would have fucking blown him away, but it would have ruined his character arc, obviously. And then Travolta's a total scumbag, and then he's pinching a loaf when he dies. <laughs> he guys his just desserts. Um, the only one that's not a total scumbag is, is Bruce Willis. Although, I don't know. Throwing the fight, I mean, that's kind of shitty. Um, but... I mean, he was constantly getting insulted by Marcellus and shit. So during that discussion, uh, so I guess I don't know if that's that counts as him being a scumbag. But I guess that's why he he's the one that 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 gets away and, and survives, you know. So, and then he ends up saving saving uh, Marcellus, which is I don't know if he does that out of nobility or if he just does it does it out of like well you know if Marcel survives I I need to make sure that he knows I helped him so he doesn't keep coming after me or whatever but yeah so uh and, and then let's get to the some of the lines really really quick it's like I fucking uh I'm gonna go mid medieval on your ass or the royale with cheese or of course bring out the gimp <laughs> the gimp what the fuck uh where do you come up with this shit uh, and a quick side note, Uma Thurman, I don't know. I don't find her very attractive, but I, a lot of people do, I guess. I guess that's why she was in Hollywood. Or Tarantino obviously finds her attractive. Or at least he finds her fucking feet attractive. I, I think they look like she's got fucking hammer toe. I don't know, man. She's got yawn hammer toe. So uh, I've never really, I never really dug Uma Thurman, although she's kind of cute in this movie. But, um, yeah, so... <laughs> Tarantino, like I said, Tarantino wants to rub his fucking wants a foot job from her. I know she want he wants a foot job from everybody. That's he's got this fucking foot fetish. If we ever go back and watch his movies, uh, it, yeah, there's always some kind of scene where somebody's fucking big old fucking corn infested, bunion infested feet, or <laughs> what a, he's got the Rex Ryan foot fetish going on. Uh, I wish I could talk about this more, but um, we got to move on. Oh, man, I still need to get through. Are we finally down to one? Yeah, we're finally down to one. So we can play for a little bit more, and then I'll squeeze in number one. Ooh. 
Ricky, I give you the word, you hit the deck running. You fall in on those yellow footprints, <laughs> and not straightforward. Do you hear me? Yes, Daddy. I can't hear you. Yes, Daddy. <laughs> What'd you say? Yes, Daddy. Oh, fucker. Fucker came out of nowhere. Uma Thurman's Hammer Toe. If I had to create a, a YouTube channel over again, I probably would have named myself Uma Thurman's Hammer Toe. Oh, fucker came out of nowhere. Open your eyes. <laughs> Isn't this how everybody drives? <laughs> That's a perfect place to park it, Phelps. <laughs> uh, why are you running? I still don't. I That must be some kind of glitch. We're just here to notify the wife, right? Yes? Hello? This is Patterson. Is this about my husband? Nice neckerchief. We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Women need to bring back the, necker the neckerchief. I'm sure there's more of a feminine name for that, but... Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car? Listen here, yeah. Freckles. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. When Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. Means you're I a slut. Here, I bet you you're gonna have to run that one bias again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. He said bow with your mama coffee. through a coffee table. Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? Just the facts, ma'am. You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship Bullshit. with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? I'm just friends. banging her. Good friends. Balls Does deep from the backside. Bad? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester could Plus, he always wanted to put it in my butt. <laughs> I hadn't told him that. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. Is this some kind of bust? You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk. We were always arguing. So what? Well, she was always arguing. See, here's the thing. The bartender said she was always arguing. They were always arguing. So that's the truth, right? But I'm going to get it wrong because this game is so fucking wonky. going to need more than that. Like I said, Lester was a great guy when he was winning. Winning? Really sunny, bright guy. Trouble was, he hardly ever won. And when he lost, he was an evil son of a bitch. Yeah, I got it wrong. Even though the bartender said, whatever. 
How did the car come to hit Lester? He walks straight into the path of an oncoming car. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're lying, Lorna. You pushed him in front of the car. If you think you can prove that, I suggest you arrest me now. Didn't someone say that the driver said The driver, I thought the driver said that, uh, I would have loved to push him under a car many a time, but not this time. <laughs> We're leaving, Lorna, but this doesn't add up. We'll be keeping an eye on you. You can't use the driver's statement against her? Probably nothing. A s stir it with a wooden spoon. Get out of here, Cole. Mind if I check your bedroom? Does he get any scotch in there? Nope. All right. We out of here, Lorna. We're coming back for you, though. You know... I don't really feel like talking to you right now. Can we get a hint from the old telephone? Phelps, one, two, four, seven. Are there any messages for me? Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Great. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks, ma'am. So we totally flubbed that interview. Gonna be a tight one. Amanda Plummer. She does a great job in that. Any of you fuckers move. We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. 
You'd be making a big mistake. Why is that? Run that by me again. The victim was dead before the car hit him. Oh. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. I thought so. Second puncture reached his heart. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. <laughs> Stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. Bayonets! Bayonets! Five patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there and they tried to stare us down. Yeah, now those sons of bitches. Here. We have the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. Can we take the corner vehicle? <laughs> oh, sweet. Hell yeah. Hop in, buddy. This thing's going to handle like shit. <laughs> Come on. Holy Cheetos. Careful. Oh, this thing sucks. I should have took our regular vehicle. It handles better, but it's slow as fuck. <laughs> I was just about to hit that fucking mailbox. Uh, well, let's go arrest these brads. I've spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Oh, Leroy, Leroy stabbed him. I have nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. Drinking off. Very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand jury. I see you to give me up, sweetheart. Sweetheart. Whispering in my ear, telling me how we had to get rid of him, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, all shut the up. The banks is covered, baby. I have nothing to do you with it. You think I'm gonna fry for He's you, Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him for God's sake! It's too late, Sabo. Out of the way, asshole. I gotta get closer. Come on, Flatfoot, let's negotiate. How long do you think you can hold out? Put your weapons down. <laughs> nice. They're both dead. You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. What a boy scout. He just blew that fucker away. He deserved it. He deserved it. He wanted to send him to the gas chamber. I'm just doing him a service. 
So I give you a hit and run. You bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first degree murder. Now how about that? This is how a good detective operates. How about a promotion there, buddy? You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. I'm going to ask you some questions. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. He's sharpening the elbow from the top rope. I missed a clue. Oh, boy. Cha-ching. Okay, well, that's a good place to uh, save. Well, it's doing it for me. A slip of the tongue. It sounds like a white snake song or something. Okay, let's go ahead and, and, and pause that and bring up the final. The final one. Oh, I got to get my notes ready. I don't know if you guessed it, but it is L.A. Confidential, which is uh, the the other noir film. Um, I guess you can consider it noir film uh, on the list. And uh, this has been one of, probably my favorite movie. It's got to be up there of all time. Uh, it's got to be. It's got to be in the top three or four. <clears throat> This movie is just so freaking great, and it's got like this all star cast too. And and uh, I know it was before like Russell Crowe and Guy Pierce were like super famous, but I did, the cast is phenomenal. Uh, it follows three. Um, I like to look at it three uh, unlikely heroes or heroes um, that are all struggling with with uh, honor. As as I guess is a better. Uh, the best way I can say it, um, you you got Ed Exley, who's Guy Pierce. He's he's the Cole Phelps. He's the boy. He's the boy scout, the do gooder, the one that's always got this this code of honor that he follows. He wants to do everything by the book. Um, but if you follow his character arc, you, you know he ends up going through the middle of the story where he he. Uh, becomes like a snitch on the other cops in order to advance his own career. Um, I should be talking to you guys. Yeah, in, in order to advance his career. So he's not as, as Boy Scout as as you would believe him, or as he would have you believe. He does have, like, these uh, moments of opportunism, and he uses it to advance his own career. But then he comes back into Boy Scout mode and into by the book mode. So he has an interesting character arc. Um, but then you got Bud, uh, fucking Bud. I mean, Russell Crowe, he's just this fucking, he's just a tank, you know, he's, just, he's the, your typical muscle cop, you know, the, the guy that's going to fucking crack some skulls <laughs> and, and beat some ass. And he has his own code of honor. He, he does have anger issues. Uh, they do explain this, that like his, dad beat his wife his dad beat his mom to death i believe i can't remember exactly but he has these anger issues um but he does have his own code of honor because he's constantly defending um battered women um and then he has like this change of heart where he he goes through and he he ends up working with exley at exley to solve the case um, basically he sets aside his ego to work with Exley. Uh, <clears throat> he doesn't, he has honor as in like not being a rat. He, he has honor, um, not tattletelling on his, on his fellow cops when they, when they beat the inmates or whatever in, in the beginning of the movie. And he does defend women, defends women's honor. And that's probably because of what happened with his parents. Um, and then the third character is Kevin Spacey's character who has no honor. <laughs> He's just like a fucking total sellout to sell your soul. He's a total pimp. Um, he's in it for the fame and fortune and that's about it. And then his character, I mean, he's just a total scumbag, you know, <laughs> like, 
like and he's kind of a, like a fraud or a fake you know and he's he, he hasn't done real police work in forever and then his arc changes like it's like the like the inverse of x lee or or goes through it's like he he starts off as a shitbag and then he gets his honor towards the end but the problem is he was a scumbag for so long that he just it's not he doesn't get his honor back in time and he's the one that dies out of all three of them so yeah um the the lesson here is that don't be a total fucking scumbag <laughs> don't be a total sellout uh when you're a cop and you're supposed to be doing uh working for justice criminal justice you know Yeah, he's he's okay with bribery and and calling calling the the tabloids when 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 he's um, about to make a, 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 a an arrest and stuff like that, you know. Um, but he he eventually he, he becomes fed up with the fake cop stuff, and when he talks to Exley, he's like, you know what, I want to actually go out and do something good and actually you know, do some real fucking police work. But it just happens to be too late for him because he ends up dying. Uh, Rolo Tomasi, I mean, he can't... He <laughs> it ranks up there with um, all the usual suspects. <laughs> fucking... Um, I like Rolo Tomasi better, to tell you the truth. Then, uh, God, I can't even remember the usual suspects. Uh, alias for the bad guy. But um, I'm sure it will come to me. Yeah, so it's all about honor and justice in this movie. Um, some other ca great characters in this movie. Uh, Kim Bassinger is hot as hell. Uh, she won an Oscar for this movie. It's her only time ever being nominated, and she won it. And I, I don't know, Kaiser Sose, that's it. Okay. Uh, and also played by Kevin Spacey. Go, go figure. Um, uh, God, you know, a lot is whatever Kevin Spacey did or you know he's turned out to be a real fucking sleaze bag in real life but he did some fucking great work in the 90s I'll tell you what I mean usual unusual or usual suspects uh 7 uh this LA confidential I mean fuck the guy was amazing uh it's it's just a shame he was a creep creeper but um yeah, Kim Basinger or Basinger or I don't know how how she pronounces it. it. Seems like I've I've heard other stars pronounce it every other fucking which way. But yeah, she's freaking gorgeous. Uh, you got David Strath and the 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 guy the the fucking pimp <laughs> the Hollywood. He cuts his he cuts his girls to look like Hollywood stars. <laughs> um, what's his name? Pierce Patchett. <laughs> what a fucking pimp this guy is. But this is this movie has oh and we can't forget uh, Danny DeVito of course is the hush hush uh, uh, tabloid dude and he does a fucking phenomenal job and then you got James Cromwell which I pointed out earlier we saw him in this game it it's well it's not actual James Cromwell in the game but I mean the character is a freaking total fucking copy of this character um, the Irish captain you know oh Boyle. <laughs> Go get him, Boyle. Uh, that's why. So, yeah, I mean, just the amount of great characters in this movie, and this is a total, just total perfect. In my in my uh, opinion, this is the perfect L.A. nineteen forties cop drama noir adjacent movie. Um, it has everything. It has it has the movie stars the. Dirty, grimy Hollywood, the dirty cops, but the cops are out. They get their man, but they, they go about questionable tactics, you know, um, and just L.A. with the with the bright lights and the and the and the, but there's this seedy underbelly. What, what a great what a, I, I love this movie. I, I adore this movie. This movie's freaking great. I and it's hard to find. I do not own this movie. It is hard to fucking find. Like, it'll pop up on one of the services once in a while, but then it'll just fucking disappear for years. Like, every time I want to go watch it, I can't find it. Um, I do believe it's on one of the services right now. I'd have to rent it for like five bucks or whatever. But I think I'm gonna watch this again. Um, it's been a, it's probably been a year or two. 
but this is one of those movies that I try to watch once a year. Uh, it's just whether I can find it or not. But that's how much I love this movie. It's, it's fucking great. Um, the names <laughs> Jack Vincennes. That's that's Kevin Spacey's character's name. Um. Yeah. So and it 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 it's better than I I I like it better than if you think of the uh, Hollywood crime movies that take place in the 40s or 30s 50s you know i like it better in chinatown a lot better in chinatown um and i can't think of any other examples but this is my favorite i'm sure if i didn't have so much booze in me i would think of some more um but yeah very hush hush and oh another noir element of it is the case they're working on if you noticed in this show or in this game i almost called it a show uh the cases like have these great names to them you know like um like slip of the tongue and stuff it's almost like a, a, a those old noir movies you know they always had those you could tell it was noir just by the title and the case they're working on like the black dahlia um the case they're working on is <laughs> the night owl murder case which is you know just that's just screams uh film noir so um, yeah, I wish I had more time to talk about that one, but uh, th- this movie's great, and of course, everybody's wearing a fedora, you know, <laughs> that's, that's such a cool, I, I would love a poster like that, if we could just crop out Kevin Spacey's creepy ass, <laughs> I could make a big Danny DeVito on there, wouldn't that be fucking, fucking awesome, um, and the guns and the, and the violence in this movie's good too, I mean, the guns are cool, um, it's just cool to see, you know. Oh, another good uh, one that I did not mention. Um, is it Mulholland Falls? I believe it's it. That's it. Or, anyways, it has Nick Nolte in it. That's a good freaking, that's a good, good detective cop movie, too. But it doesn't rank anywhere close to this. This is the best. Yep, okay, I was right. So, yeah, um. That's it. We've left off. We, we'll we'll continue the uh, Cole adventures of Cole Phelps in the LAPD traffic division next time we pick up in in three weeks or three to four weeks. I haven't decided if I'm going to play a new game next week or if we're going to roll Skyrim into this. I haven't decided yet. Um. So we'll see. I was thinking of. I'd have to look for new games, um, what I want to play next. <sighs> or I could do the option of just playing Skyrim on one of these f- nights. So, uh, like I said, it'll rotate. So, um, we'll either play Skyrim or a new game next week, and then the week after we'll be... We'll continue off on Leisure Suit... We'll continue off Leisure Suit Larry uh, Magna Cum Laude in two weeks. So, we're going to have a week in between... I know how everybody's excited for Leisure Suit Larry, a magnum cum laude. <laughs> so, oh, shit. Well, that's all I have for tonight. I need to go to bed. I've been drinking since, I don't know, 7 o'clock, 6 or 6.15 or something like that. So, boyos and girls, girlos, I want to thank you all for watching the Saturday night fucking live stream on, on the YouTubes. I am the spicy burrito, and I am. Hope you enjoyed it. I am, and I am signing off.